Hello everyone, Sierra Games here, and today we are going to be continuing our first playthrough of Jump King. And uh, we, we have 17 and a half hours in this game already. Like, where did all the time go, first of all? Um, <laughs> second of all, uh, we have 25,000 falls. So I would say it doesn't bother me. It does a little bit, but the more the more I fall, the more I become the fall queen, and it doesn't even phase me. So hopefully, if we do fall, we can make a quick comeback, and we are going to try to get through the snowy level today and get to the next section of this game. That's the goal, because we did it once. We just need to do it again. It takes me a little bit, a little while to, you know, uh work work up to uh you know being good at the game again it takes me like 30 minutes to really get in the groove <laughs> but i'm hoping hoping that you know getting through the snow level isn't too big of an ask for this stream so 25,795 oh never mind oh switch that that's the amount of jumps i have 25,000 falls would be insane i only have 2,926 falls so you know in the grand scheme of things <laughs> Especially since I thought it was so believable to have 26,000 falls. You know, almost 3,000 is nothing. So maybe I'm doing better than I thought. Who knows? Um, but we're here. We're at this snowy part. Uh, hopefully I can remember all the things that I, uh, that we wanted, uh, that we were kind of, uh, remember all the things we figured out in the last stream. Like, exactly when to jump and like when these cer certain things work because there really is like a there's an art to it um <laughs> there really is like the perfect time to jump and stuff like that it's seeming like i'm remembering these next these these screens which is nice i'm glad that i remember at least at least at least this part you know <laughs> and hi mel thank you so much how are you doing mel i hope you're doing well this week has been so, 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 so crazy for me. I'm so happy that I remember that jump. That jump is a hard one. Um, <laughs> to get onto that little platform, that kills me. Um, I was going to say that this week has been like, oh, so, so long for me. But I'm so glad it's Friday. And uh, I don't know how much relaxation time I'm really going to get this week. Um because I have a lot of my masters to write, uh, like drafts and stuff that are due. Man, I'm just jumping. Hold on, let me concentrate really quick to get up here. I got a lot of stuff to do this weekend, but yeah, this this week's been crazy. So I'm glad. The, long story short, I'm you know walking circles around myself. I can't seem to speak today, but <laughs> I'm glad I'm streaming. <laughs> that's my that's the main point I wanted to convey. <laughs> Ooh, making quesadillas. Nice, nice. Now, do you do anything special when you make, like, your, your quesadillas? Or, you know, obviously there's cheese in it. Are you, like, a salsa and sour cream kind of quesadilla eater? Because when I eat my quesadillas, I always have uh, sour cream and salsa to go with it. That's my, mmm, that's my favorite. Okay, at least we didn't fall all the way back down again. <laughs> that's good jump there perfect we can make that jump fairly easily it's just you know getting the right jump for for that <laughs> without getting like you know bumping off the wall or it not being a big enough jump that sort of thing there we go all right yeah it takes me a little bit to get back in the groove so if i'm a little bit quieter in the beginning that's why I have to be like a try hard at the beginning. <laughs> so I'm not just, you know, flailing all over the place for the whole stream. Just most of it. Let me through! <laughs> Hi, Mons! How are you? So, um, I guess I owe you guys an explanation since I said this week is so crazy. I'm sure you guys are dying to know why it was so crazy. Um, I had. Man, I can't even can't even count. I think I had like four interviews this week, um, you know, for the teaching, the teaching position that I want to get for this upcoming school semester, school year. And I have, um, 
I have one offer on the table already and then hopefully a second one coming in. And it's just, ooh, it's made me an anxious mess, to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, it's really good news. I've been working really hard um, on it. So that's why this week has been crazy is just, uh, you know, scheduling those interviews. I did some in person and, oh, man, it's awkward, like, standing, uh, you know, sitting... I had this one interview where it's a conference table, right? It's a bunch of guys in suits. There's like five or six of them. I don't even know. I just kind of, <laughs> I don't imagine them all in their underwear, but I don't, sometimes I don't make direct eye contact because I get nervous. Um, it's better for me to like kind of, uh, you know, focus on whoever asked the question. So sometimes I forget how many people are interviewing me, but that's besides the point. Um, we, uh, what, what was I going with that? Oh, oh gosh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm performing poorly. Um, but yeah, it was it was strange to see like these five or six people in suits and then they're like literally across like a conference room from me. It was amazing that they heard me. <laughs> I was pretty nervous, so I must have been speaking pretty loudly. But they're like, all right, sit right there. And then there's like a tiny bottle of water and then the questions in front of me and I'm just, I'm just sitting there, but they're like across the room. <laughs> It was just the weirdest thing. And I'm used to, I was going to reach out and shake the guy's hand. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> I've never got denied. But, like, I forgot about, you know, the whole six feet. I was going to I was gonna reach out and grab this guy's hand. But, man, he was really good at, like, kind of dodging. He kind of grabbed the door and swung behind. He's like, oh, no, 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 you go in. We're going to keep six feet apart. And reminded me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, oh, this isn't going well. <laughs> I already, I already was trying to give the, the, the guy who, you know, was going to let me in, you know, I was going to give him germs by shaking his hand. So they had a little bottle of water and then they had a, they had a huge Purell bottle in the corner too. And as soon as I sat down, I took a couple of squirts of that. I'm like, hold on, I got to take some of this. And some of them laughed or whatever. It was... You know, I, I said it in a, in a joking way, I guess, but, uh, or they're laughing at me. Who knows? As long as they're having fun, um, <laughs> interviewing me. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the smallest bottle of water you've ever seen next to, you know, one of the big biggest bottles of sanitizer you, you could ever buy. <laughs> they want to test how well you project your voice. There you go. Yeah. GG. <laughs> Guys in suits. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I guess I projected myself really well because after that interview and like they asked me a question about a specific acronym and oh my gosh, it was, a, it was an education acronym, something I learned about, um, you know, a long time ago. Uh, the acronym doesn't matter, but they're like, oh, like how would you, uh, you know, have a student go through blank this acronym. And I don't, I didn't remember what the acronym was. So I looked at them and I'm like, can I have an example of blank? And they looked at each other and they're just like, no, <laughs> no, no, it's just blank. And I'm like, oh my gosh, um, you guys know me. You guys know how bad I am at acronyms. If they would have said the whole thing out loud, I would have been fine. But I was hoping and asking them for an example of the acronym, they would tell me. <laughs> they did not. They did not. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I drew a blank and insert acronym here. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so I don't know. It was pretty funny. Um, you know, I was very nervous at the time my voice was cracking and stuff, you know, as I'm sure anybody's voice would crack if there was like many, you know, five or six men in suits staring at you, wondering what you were going to say. <laughs> And then get this, I, I leave, right? I go home and I'm like thinking to myself all the things I could have done better and you know, all the things that you think of after an interview. And then three hours later, I get, I, I got an offer. Long story short, I got an offer from those people and I thought I didn't do that well at all, but I, I, I guess I got it and it's a really good offer. Um, and I don't know, I'm really excited. So it, it th that's a good thing. I'm weighing, you know, two offers right now and I'll decide next week. So that's why I've been anxious. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the offers. The one interview, the first, you know, in-person interview I did, that was really awkward. <laughs> but at least they, I don't know, they must have seen something in me. At least they know that I don't know everything, which I guess makes me feel a lot better. Um, and then I looked up that acronym later and it had nothing to do with elementary school. The acronym they were asking me about has, has to do with uh, high school. So I'm like, is that a trick question? Like, why did they even ask me about that? So it was, it, it, I still don't understand the question. And I looked up the acronym. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Out of nine questions, that one question about the acronym kind of stuck out. So maybe it didn't matter how I was supposed to answer. Maybe it was all like a, <laughs> like a trick question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was. I just think I forgot, but. If it's a high school thing, I, I, I you know, forgot uh, for a reason, because I don't really want to teach high school. Uh, lower grades are, like, more my thing. But I digress. But, yeah, that's one of my offers. So, very exciting. It, it's crazy that they told me, like, three hours after. So, they're kind of on a time crunch. So, I got to decide my future soon, which is uh, really, uh, really scary. <laughs> like oh, not a big deal just tell us in you know three or four days you know how you know you know where you want to work at for the foreseeable future and move to soon so Whew. Lot, lots of stuff to think about yeah I'm I'm gonna have to move a little bit it wasn't that it wasn't too too far but I want to move closer um, so I will be moving in the next month or two to be closer because it it's not like terrible terrible it's like 45 minutes to an hour depending on traffic um but i'm looking around an area where it'll be like 30 less than 30 yeah hey Zordon. yeah we're talking about um a job offer that i just got um so almost a new job i just have to make a decision um i just have to make a decision by next week so we we're just talking about uh how an awkward interview that i did ended up you know turning into a job offer, which is really surprising. <laughs> How are you doing, Zordon? <laughs> yeah, new job and new digs. Yeah, so in the next couple of months, um, I haven't, you know, uh, for both of the offers that I'm probably going to get, I'm going to have to move. So you guys can expect in like about two months or so, um, I'll have a new setup and hopefully I'll get internet up fairly quick at my new place. Um, but obviously I'll keep you guys updated and stuff, but you might see you might see a new background pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 excited. <laughs> ah! Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> the wind pushed me back as soon as I started to regret it. <laughs> You guys trying to say great? Very, very fraught. Hold on. For rot? For what? Turn down for what? Great, great joke. Fantastic. A plus. Yeah, phone typing. Yeah, I understand that. Um, did I guys, did I tell you guys ever? Oh my gosh, how bad I am at this game? I probably have, but the thing I was going to say is, have I ever told you about how, um, this reminds me of it, um, but how I used to have long nails, right? Like super, super long nails. I think I was streaming a little bit at the time, but once I got rid of like my fake nails, I couldn't type at all. Like, <laughs> like phone typing was impossible because when I had long nails, I would like kind of hold, you know, uh, type a little bit to the left to offset the fact that I had nails. And I never realized I did it until I got rid of the nails. In which case it took me like two months to recorrect myself, like for the keyboard, for, the phone, I got so mad at myself because like, I guess I just forgot how to type with regular, <laughs> with regular nails. That's one of the reasons I'll never get long nails again. I'm like, first it's, you know, it's expensive and you can't tie kids shoes if you have long nails. It's very hard, very embarrassing. So those, those are two reasons. But the third is that, you know, it'll mess up any future typing I want to do. <laughs> If I ever go back to regular nails, like that was the hardest, the hardest change was going back to normal. <laughs> teacher jokes. Hey, <laughs> no, I gotta be that cool teacher that has like a bunch of, uh, teach, you know, 
like relatable memes around the classroom. That's what I need. <laughs> but yeah, that that misspelling thing reminded me of that. <laughs> Let me in! Dang it! <laughs> oh that jump, and that's not even the hard part I'm stuck on. Believe it or not, we've made it past that part before. At least I'm getting better at this, though. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> no one's ever called me cool before, before I started streaming. <laughs> Maybe you guys are lying to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I have been called the dork most of my life, so I know that much is true. <laughs> I think I talked about this before, but, uh, you know, this is just coming up in my head now. But I always prefer being called a, a dork as opposed to a, uh, as opposed to a nerd. I don't know. Like, dirt dorks are more, uh, I don't know. I guess, uh, like, relatable, I would say. I've always viewed, like, the word, uh, dork in a more positive light than I do, uh, like a nerd. The cool dork. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that reminds me of the time where, uh, you know, I was a camp counselor, and then one of my, one of the kids was talking about Twitch and stuff, and they asked me if I knew what it was, and I'm like, nope, I have no, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I felt like I was, like, Hannah Montana, you know, pretending like I wasn't a streamer, even though I am. <laughs> it was way more exciting in my head than it actually was. But I'm like, no, explain it to me. And they're like, it's a place where you play Fort or where you watch Fortnite. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a lie. <laughs> you can watch so many other things than Fortnite, but then also in my head, I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Like, he's never gonna, you know, make it to my, he's never gonna accidentally find my channel. <laughs> oh man, now if I wanted my secret identity to be caught, I'd start streaming a bunch of Fortnite. <laughs> and I did play Fortnite for a time, right? Like, uh, I think it was during the summer when I was talking about it a little bit. Like, I understand the appeal. I stopped playing it, though, after a couple, like a month or two. I was only playing it because my friend convinced me to play it with him. It's better when you're, like, in a squad and stuff, as most games are. Um... But uh, I, ne I would never stream it because that's definitely where my, my students would be if they're on Twitch. <laughs> They'd be right there in the, in the Fortnite section. They'd see me and be like, oh, Miss Sierra? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I can have my, my Hannah Montana, um, what's it called? My Hannah Montana dream. <laughs> That's how I view myself. <laughs> With the the theme song. What is it? Um uh, Styles every shoe, every color. When you're famous it can be kind of fun. I watched a lot of Hannah Montana. Anyways, that's just a snippet of the beautiful of the beautiful theme music at the beginning of Hannah Montana. It's like, it's only you and no one ever discovers. <laughs> it's like, who would have thought that a girl like me could something like a superstar? And it's like, you get the best. All right, I think you guys get it. Man, when I fall there, I just can't get back up. Have you ever fallen and not been able to get back up? Oh. <laughs> I did this to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the emote things. Oh my gosh. I watched Sonic the Hedgehog recently, the movie. And Sonic started flossing. Flossing came from Fortnite, right? And oh my gosh. I died inside. Like, the movie was good. <laughs> the movie was good up till that point. <laughs> and then I saw the flossing and I'm like, oh, floss my brain, please. <laughs> When he, fl I'm like, that's not necessary. This movie would be so much better if he didn't floss. I know that's an overreaction, but I, I enjoyed, you know, unpopular opinion maybe, but I enjoyed uh, Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. I thought it was good. I didn't, 
You know, I thought Jim Carrey was good in it, but I haven't seen a Jim Carrey in, like, movie in a million years. But I think Jim Carrey was good as, uh, you know, Dr. Eggman. <laughs> Shazam? I don't know if I've ever seen that, Mons. Shazam isn't the one with, like, Bugs Bunny and all those characters, right? Like, the basketball movie? Is that what Shazam is? Yeah, I, I do like Jim Carrey. I used to have, like, the hugest crush on him as a kid. <laughs> TMI, I know, but... <laughs> I thought he was amazing. <laughs> okay, so Shazam isn't the movie that I'm thinking of. What am I thinking of? I thought it had started with the word Shazam. Oh, uh, okay. You know... I avoid superhero movies like The Plague. <laughs> I I don't know. Besides Deadpool. Deadpool is the only one that I watched the trailer and I'm like, okay, I could watch this. But for some reason, I just like, I do not like the idea of superheroes. I don't know. Maybe I just don't have like an imagination or something. <laughs> maybe I don't want ha anybody to have superpowers. Maybe I just want everyone to be a fish person. That's why I don't like superheroes, because they look like a human on the outside. And what I really want is some more of Shape of Water. <laughs> I think that's my problem with all movies. I'm like, why can't this be more like Shape of Water? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, have you ever heard a superhero mo movie compared to... Uh, to fish people before? Probably not. <laughs> now you know what goes on in my head. <laughs> okay. Shazam is great. Okay. Is it on Netflix or anything? Or Amazon Prime or Hulu? You know, for some reason I have a I have a subscription for all three. <laughs> I have Netflix, I have Hulu, and I have Shazam. I also have Curiosity, but it's more of my boyfriend who has Curiosity stream. We get a lot of uh, TV subscriptions. It's, it's kind of bad. <laughs> but we never have an excuse not to have anything to watch, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true too, Zordon. Oh my gosh, that, that wind gets me every time. <laughs> Help. Help, I keep doing the same things over and over again. Okay. Get back on this, on this snowy, what is this, this snowy peak? Something like that? Oh my gosh, I caught myself. Um, you think it's on Amazon. Okay, okay, Mons. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do the right jump. Uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't give up, I didn't mean to throw myself across the map. And then I'm, get, I'm getting distracted by my own bad playing. Ah! Mmm. Mmm. Yep. Mmm. I just did that. <laughs> Wait, you're saying Shazam is a... Did you say it was a superhero movie just a second ago? But you're thinking that I would like it. But I shouldn't look up, up what it is. That's what people tell me when they think I won't like it. They're like, Sierra, watch this movie, but don't look at the trailer. Because I know that I'll, you know, they know that I'll say no if I see the trailer. Is it one of those times, Mons, where, where you don't think I'll like it, but you want me to see it, so you're telling me not, you know, not to watch the trailer? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, did you say yes to that? <laughs> oh, yes. Now you're thinking. <laughs> oh, okay. What what is with me in this jump right now? No. <laughs> the Joker. Oh, you know what? That came out this year, right? There's so much people so many people like talking about it. Oh my gosh. Help, I'm going to yeet myself off the off the top to the bottom. Did did I did I use that word right? I've been saying yeet a lot more. My brother looks at me like I'm crazy. I'm, I, 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 when I talk to him and stuff, I, I, I sprinkle the word yeet into my sentences. <laughs> and he looks like I've just been possessed or something. 
<laughs> and then I'm like, well, did I when it, did I use it right? And he's like, yes, but in a very like concerned way. So what I'm trying to say is, you're not the only <laughs> person concerned for me saying eat a lot. I just I just feel like when I play this game, I need to say eat. I swear I haven't been playing Fortnite again. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> okay. It's not your typical superhero movie. What, the jo the Joker? Because the, the Joker, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely, yeah, self-reflection. The, mm-hmm. Yeah, the trailer really uh, gets that across. I didn't, I for sure did not think it was a superhero movie when I saw the trailer. Um, it, it does look good. Um, recently, you know, I've been watching a lot of movies lately, which is surprising. Um, most recently I watched, uh, The Theory of Everything, which is on Netflix. And that is about, uh, it's like the story of, uh, Stephen Hawking. In which case I, I included a little bit about Stephen Hawking, my master. So I'm like, you know, I might as well take a break from writing by watching, you know, a movie about Stephen Hawking. I'm like, totally justified in my mind. I'm still doing work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing work. You can't convince me I'm not working right now. So I watched the movie Theory of Everything. Oh, it was good. It was... I highly recommend it if you, you know, like documentaries at all. I don't even like docu... I mean, it's not a documentary, I should say. It's, you know, like a mov movie adaptation based around his life. So not a documentary. I need to correct myself so you guys don't think it's, like, actually Stephen Hawking in the movie. It's an actor portraying him, right? Um, but I, I think it was really good. I, I really liked it, and it had just, it, it, it was emotional, but it was also, you know, uh, it was, like, real, it was emotional, it, you know, all those things. I can't do it justice, so I just recommend you guys to see it if you haven't before. Because I, I really liked it. Boop. There could be better Stephen Hawking movies out there, um, but there wasn't that many on uh, Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime. I think you have to buy the really good ones, but Theory of Everything's like kind of up there in terms of movies, you know, based around Stephen Hawking's life. I would know because I looked at many movie lists. I also kind of, I, I never end up watching movies because I spend most of my time looking at movie rankings and then I psych myself out uh, into watching a movie or like I, I don't watch the movie because I see like negative reviews of it. <laughs> I'm like, I look at many, many websites and if, you know, one or two of the websites say a movie's bad, I'm like, oh, should I watch this movie? And then I just never end up watching any movie because of it. <laughs> so I'm trying to get better at expanding my movie horizons and not being influenced by what people on <laughs> YouTube or on some random blog have to say. Is that the person who plays Joker, Mons? Yeah, you ignore the critics. I know, I should do that, but for some reason I feel like I'm just like, I, I don't know, like this judge that like looks at movie reviews as like, oh, should I be investing my time into this movie? And then like I sit and watch like two hours, two or three hours of, you know, basic reviews for, you know, it could be a movie, it could be even a video game. And then I'm like, I could have been just watching the movie this entire time. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I have like, uh, um, I don't know, indecision just just gets at me. It's my my uh, kryptonite, I guess. <laughs> I did not watch RoboCop. I've never seen it. It's on my list though. Are you guys proud of me that I watched? Uh, oh gosh, what what's the movie called? I watched Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, I'll Be Back. Why am I forgetting the name? The something. Um, hmm. I'm really convincing you guys that I've seen this movie, huh? What is it? Terminator, thank you. <laughs> Terminator, I swear I've watched it. I promise I have watched it. I just watched it. I'm bad with names, man. And dates in times in <laughs> everything <laughs> it's, it's amazing <laughs> i i
do not recall Total Recall, so I, I haven't seen it now. <laughs> Did you see my little joke I threw in there? Oh gosh, please! Let me go. Alright. Wait, should I watch Robocop first? Um, Shazam or Total Recall? Which one out of those three do you think I should watch? That also reminds me, my, my dad gave me some movie recommendations. What did he tell me to watch? He told me to watch something like Wedding Crashers, but it wasn't quite Re Wedding Crashers. And I'm like, Dad, why would I watch that? It's like, I don't know. It's like the humor that I don't really like anymore. Um, and he's like, just, just, just watch it. It's really funny. And now I'm afraid to watch it because my dad's hyped it up so much. <laughs> it's not Wedding Crashers, but it's something similar to it. American Pie. He wants me to watch American Pie. I've never seen it before. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, watch watch all three of the movies, but the old RoboCop. I didn't even know there was a new one. Oh gosh, what am I doing? Oh! <laughs> no. Yeah, because I was telling him about how I watched uh, Ricky Bobby. Um, Ta Talladega Nights. I, I watched that. I don't know if I told you guys on stream about it. I might have. Um, I watched Talladega Nights, uh, the tale of Ricky Bobby or something. And I used to think it was so funny, but I, I did not like it. I don't know. My boyfriend thought it was funny. And, you know, everyone else thought it was hilarious. But I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I'm like, why don't I think this is funny? And it's just, you know, a lot of... I mean, obviously, they're making fun of people who live in the area. Like, I, I guess they're making fun of, like, rednecks, I guess, in the movie. Um, so they make, you know, sexist and homophobic remarks. And I'm not, like, the the police for that sort of thing, but it's not that funny when the whole movie is based on that. Um, but that, that's just my opinion, obviously. People, people can think differently. Oh my gosh, please let me through. <laughs> But I do, I do remember loving Anchorman, but it's been a couple years since I've watched Anchorman, so I'm afraid to watch Anchorman again because I'm, you know, I'm just afraid it's not going to be as good as I remember it. Ah! <laughs> Let me through. Okay. We're getting pretty darn close. It's like one screen above this one. Ow, my head. Okay. So you can't just jump up to get to that ledge. I wanted to skip the steps. Oh! <laughs> hey, Kurt! What is up? Oh, hold on. I will look at chat in a second. Just climbing these snowy mountains here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it made up on the spot, but not in a good way. I misread that at first. Yeah. Yeah, it, kind of, it, it did feel like that. <laughs> yeah, it got, it got a little bit stale. Hey, Glitter Witch! Thank you so much for the raid! How are you? <laughs> hi! Hi, Xenia! It's been a while! And how are you... How What were you streaming? I have a lot of questions. It just all kind of combined into me saying how many times. Hello, M. Glitter Witch, of course. <laughs> it's going well. I just started. We're playing this really hard platformer game called Jump King. So we're in this hard part where the wind kind of pushes you. And it's uh, it's a time. <laughs> what, were we, what were we talking about? We were just talking about, um, you know, movies that haven't aged well, basically. I was telling everybody just a second ago that I watched Talladega Nights, uh, the Ricky Bobby, um, that racing movie, just last week, and I remembered loving it when I was a kid. This is when I was a kid, but I watched it and I don't like it anymore. So, do you guys have any movies like that where you love, you liked something as a kid or a teenager, and then you watch it as an adult, and you're like, why did I think this was funny? <laughs> you're playing Animal Crossing! Yay! That's awesome! <laughs> Yeah, for moral support, perfect. Yes, I need I need the moral support. <laughs> I'm only staying sane because I'm 
I'm talking over, <laughs> I'm talking over all the hard parts. That kind of, that kind of helps, especially when I have something, someone to talk to as well. It helps get me through uh, the more difficult parts of Jump King. <laughs> you did, Glitter Witch? Oh my gosh. I want to watch that. I want to watch that YouTube video. You can, if you remember what it is, DM me because I was just talking about how I spend most of my time watching reviews of movies, but I never commit to watching a movie. So I could just continue doing that. <laughs> I feel like I've watched a bunch of movies when in actuality, I really haven't. <laughs> I've watched very few movies, but I've seen hundreds and thousands of reviews. Darn it. Yeah, so I was talking about how, um, you know, we were saying Anchorman is a good movie, but I'm afraid of rewatching the movie Anchorman because I loved it so much as a kid. And now that I watched Ricky Bobby and I don't like it at all anymore, I'm afraid that's what's going to happen to Anchorman. And I don't know if I want to shatter that dream for myself quite yet <laughs> I don't I don't know if I want to do that Ooh, there we go yeah it's for sure disappointing mm-hmm and then you watch and you're like what was I thinking as a kid oh yeah I was a kid <laughs> oh no what am I doing ah! sometimes I just jump and I don't think about it <laughs> Yeah, you have, like, the opposite problem then, huh, Mons? I mean, sometimes, like, if there's a review on YouTube that I watched that I really liked and they show clips from the movie, I can convince myself that I watched it. <laughs> I just have to forget about the fact I haven't watched it. And then once I see a clip from that movie, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. And then it takes me, like, a little while afterwards to remember, oh, no, Sierra, you didn't see it. You just saw a review of it. I used to be that way also with uh, video games, because I didn't always have a gaming PC. I would miss out on so many games growing up. Uh, I was only able to afford a gaming PC when I, you know, turned 20, 21, I think. So fairly recently, 25 now, so I've had it for a couple years. But uh, I used to watch video game reviews for PC games and just watch them and be like, oh man, like I want to play this or watch like a playthrough of it, not even a review, just watching somebody play a game. And then I would feel like I watched it, or I played it myself. <laughs> so when I go to high school, or when I when we're talking about video games at high school, with my my nerdy friend group at the time, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I I played that game." <laughs> no one questioned it. Everyone just thought I did. <laughs> Aha! Okay, let's do this. We're back up here again. This is good. I think somebody told me that I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Sounds good, Glitter Witch. Give me, give me a good snack. <laughs> Whenever I go get a snack, I have a running gag on the channel that I'm getting a, a peanut butter and butter sandwich. For some reason, I love, you know, it's, you know, biscuit, like a biscuit kind of bread. And then you put butter on, you toast it, you put butter on it, you put peanut butter on it. It's, it's delicious. Solid 6 out of 10 <laughs> on the deliciousness scale. So whenever someone says snack, I immediately think peanut butter butter bread. <laughs> oh, let me go! Let me through! Oh no. Oh. It took me half a second to realize that jump wasn't going to work. So, yep, this is the dreaded snow level. If you're not familiar with Jump King, uh, this is like the level that kind of I feel like a lot of people talk about when they talk about this game. So hopefully when I get past this part, uh, I'll be in the I'll be in the clear. Hey, Uso, how are you? I don't know if I said uh, hi to you too as well, Kurt. I think I did, but I'll say I'll say hi again. Hi. <laughs> okay, don't let me fall. Don't let me. Don't let me. Don't let me. Don't let me down. Okay, there we go. I'm safe in the snow. The wind can't push me if I'm on the ground. <laughs> With peanut butter and butter. You do? I'm not the only person who has that. But, like, you can't add anything else to it. It's just peanut butter and butter. Is that what you eat as well? Because I haven't found anybody else who eats that. <laughs> like, even if I have jam, I still eat peanut butter and butter. 
which is probably a little bit too much butter, if I'm being honest. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's not the healthiest thing you could eat. But man, is it good? And then you drink some milk with it. You know, you have a glass of milk on the side. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> oh. I haven't had jam in like so, so, so long. My roommates have a bunch of jam in the house, right? But I, I don't know. I just, I guess I don't, I don't like jam. Even if it's in the house, I don't really want to eat it. I've maybe only had it a couple of times. Oh no! Let me through! Let me through! Okay. Oh my gosh. Hold on. We got, we got this. We got this. <gasps> okay. We haven't made to this part in a while. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, ready. Oh my gosh. No! <laughs> Dang it. Okay. You can tell that this game is very hard. <laughs> Alright. Darn it. Okay, get, get me back down here. Alright. I'm fairly quick at this part, so we should be able to get back to where we were uh, once I stop falling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is stressful. It's a little bit less stressful than getting over it, though, I'd like to imagine. Because there isn't, like, an omnipotent... Omnipotent? That word is so hard for me. There isn't an omnipotent <laughs> narrator that, like, tells you you've fallen, uh, like, in getting over it. I've seen people play getting over it, and it's kind of like this game, except you're a guy in a bucket and you use your arms to get up a mountain, right? And you're trying to get to the top, much like this game just, you know, different limbs <laughs> that you're using, but at least nobody's here to taunt me. But it does tell me how many times I've fallen. We're almost on the 3,000th fall. Throw a party. <laughs> just, turn, just delete my file once I get to 3,000. I'm just kidding. I won't. <laughs> That's a lot of falls, though. Yeah, if this game was constantly taunting me, I wouldn't be able to... I wouldn't be able to hang. Now you want waffles and jam? I have never had waffles and jam, and jam before, Mon Mons. I've had uh, blueberry waffles and butter. That's probably the closest thing I've gotten to waffles and jam. Do you do you substitute the syrup for jam, or do you put the jam on your wa on your waffles and then you also put syrup on top of that? Like, that that sounds like a lot of sugar, right? Like, I can't live without syrup. I buy, like, the the highest fructose corn syrup. <laughs> the most sugar. Whatever that is. I also like when the bottle is shaped as something, you know. Uh, I, I like, like, the honey bottles that are shaped like a bear. Those are very nice. Right now I have the syrup bo bottle that is shaped as a lady. In which case, I don't know why it's shaped as a lady. But I, I, the syrup comes out of her head, and I find that amusing. <laughs> so I'm like, yep, I'm buying that one, just solely based on the bottle. <laughs> but yeah, I love syrup. No syrup, oh my gosh. No syrup at all. I don't know how, how you do that, Mons. I need syrup. I used to, I used to uh, also have this saying that if you can't see, see the butter, then it's not there. So, I, I would have a lot of butter on my uh, waffles as well. <laughs> lots of butter, lots of syrup. It's just, you know, it doesn't look good, but it, it tastes good to me. <laughs> I'm just like the most unhealthy person. <laughs> oh, thank goodness I didn't fall again. Let me through! Aw, oh, man. There we go. All right, now. Now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Did I say we were getting somewhere today? Nope. Just planning on doing the same jumps for three hours. Um, anyways, before I started this stream, I was kind of just sitting around biding my time because I feel so pressured by this Twitch schedule thing that I need to start exactly when I said I was going to start. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I don't even know how many of you even looked at the, the new schedule thing on Twitch, at least for my channel, because I said that I was going to be playing, you know, Jump King today at, um, at 2, 
And I was ready, honestly, at, tw at like 1230. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, so you gotta find some other things to do. You gotta find some other things to do so you can start at 2 like you said you were going to start. I'm very, uh, kind of rigid when, rigid when it comes to, like, dates and times. I'm, like, there right away. You know, in real life, when I'm gonna stream, I'm always, like, five or ten minutes early. But this time, I was an hour and a half early. And I'm like, oh man, Twitch has that new, that new dumb schedule thing. You know, no offense to Twitch. I'm sure it's helpful for some, some people. But I like starting whenever, whenever I want. And if I'm being forced to say what time I'm gonna stream on a certain day, then I, I will stream on that time, but I'm gonna complain about it. <laughs> and probably be ready at like a different time. <laughs> and then sit around watching like two hours of YouTube because I'm, I'm waiting to start my Twitch stream that I promised would start at two. So that's kind of what happened today. Um, <laughs> that's, that's definitely what happened today. But then I get more time to like watch other people's Twitch channels and stuff. And I've been doing that a lot more, you know, a lot more often because I've been home and it's been, it's been really cool. I dropped in Glitter Witch's, uh, you know, channel a couple days ago and then some other friends that I don't really get to visit as often. So it's nice when I have the time, but, uh, I was trying to keep myself from playing video games, um, because I knew that. We we're gonna play Jump King, and I need all of my hand dexterity for that game. <laughs> I didn't want to get, uh, you know, tired of holding a controller before the stream even started. Because, you know, as lame as it sounds, I do get kind of tired when I play Jump King. Like, I'm actually jumping with him. I don't know if I just hold my breath or do something stupid like that, but after I play Jump King, I'm like, oh my gosh. I just don't want to hold a controller. I don't want to play any games right now. I just want to watch TV. <laughs> is that is that normal? Yeah, it's like mentally exhausting. Yeah, definitely. I I agree with that, um. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always I'm early to everything. That's why I um so since I'm early to everything, uh I just my whole life since I've been early and on time to everything, I've had friends like I don't know why I, you know, opposites attract, that sort of thing, but I've always had friends who are really not good at being on time. So they'll be like, or they'll, can they'll cancel right last minute, and I'll be somewhere like 30 minutes early or something, and they'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't be there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I show up 30 minutes early and then I have to play it off like I'm not sitting there? And I'm like, oh yeah, no problem, no problem. And I'm... <laughs> It's a blessing and a curse, uh, I like to think. Um, yeah, so even, um, I'm also really good at writing down dates and times, because I can't remember them off the top of my head, which is a weird thing, because I'm so punctual, you know, so you'd think that it would be in my head, but I put everything in my phone, right? My phone's good at, you know, it's not like a person, it's not going to forget anything, so it will go off when it has to, and usually an hour before an hour or 30 minutes before an event's supposed to start it will tell me give me the right amount of time for, to prepare but for some reason i also have friends that like forget the date that we're gonna hang out even though it's in a text sitting right in front of them that's like one of my pet peeves is when i'm like oh, okay how about on you know august 2nd at 10 we are going to go to the mall together and then they text me and they're like i'm sorry i forgot the date and I'm like, you don't have that excuse. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, you don't have that excuse. The, the text is like, you just have to scroll up like 20 text messages. <laughs> or you should have written it down when we made the plans. That's like, whew. That, that gets me. That gets me, uh, you know, I guess a little bit irritated. If I'm irritated from everything, from anything. Um, and I, I'm not, I'm a pretty chill person, but, you know, I don't ever call someone out for it, though. <laughs> I just think... I just think in my head, I'm like, why, why can't you just write it down? So I make it a point even like with my personal life and my work life, I, I text or email the person the day before to confirm the date and time. And you know, some people find that annoying, but just life has taught me that I need to do that. 
So even if you're just like me, and I've never seen you be late ever, and you're always punctual or always early like me, I can't stop myself from confirming the day before that our plans are still on. Like, you know, and you know, I think that's a good, I think that's a good habit to have, but it does get annoying for some people. Like some people will be like, Sierra, like I said, I was going to be there. I'm going to be there. Or like I, I panic if they don't respond. I'm like, oh gosh, please say that you're still going to be there. And then they're like, obviously I said I was going to be there, so I will. But if they don't make the second confirmation, I get worried. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, they didn't confirm twice. What's going on? But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very punctual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've had friends like that too, Mons? Forgetting when they make plans. Maybe I just, I don't forget my plans because I have plans so rarely. Um, you know, surprise, surprise, I'm an introvert. Um, so I, I don't really leave the house that much and I'm not complaining about it. Like I love being home <laughs> probably more than, than I'm supposed to like being home. Um, so when I make plans, it's like kind of a big deal, you know, I, I mean, I can't really compare, you know, how many plans I have to now since, you know, I'm still under kind of a quarantine at the moment. Um, but usually I'd go out like every you know, once every two or three weeks for like a friend kind of outing, if, if that even. It would really depend on like, you know, what's going on at the time in my life. But uh, maybe that's also why, you know, plans mean so much to me. It's because I'm like, oh, I only have this opportunity once or twice every month. <laughs> I'm for sure going to remember my plan. <laughs> yeah, confirming that you confirm the confirmation. Mm-hmm. Also, that fall, that fall that just happened was totally my fault. <laughs> you have the luxury of forgetting. That's that, yeah. That, 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 the way you put it makes sense, Mons. Yeah, <laughs> the luxury of forgetting. You're like, oh, I got so many outings. I can forget a couple of them this week. Not a big deal. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to go out or I'm gonna... You know, I'm gonna go crazy. It's either I don't want to go out or like I need this outing to happen or else I'm just gonna go do something myself. There's like never any in between. <laughs> okay, we're back here again. Don't do anything dumb. Oh, but I did something dumb. Oh, it's whenever the wind is blowing the hardest and I jump at that part, I get like blown into this area again. It's not that far, so it's not too big of a deal, but I keep making the same mistakes over and over again. A lot of this is just like memorization for me. So you'll have to pardon me if I have to do something, you know, two dozen times to get it. And being quiet won't, won't really help me either. <laughs> so I appreciate, appreciate having you guys to talk to while I'm doing this. It, it helps. Helps uh, stop me from uh, throwing my controller out the window. <laughs> I'm your spirit twin, Mons. I, you know, I already knew that when you gave peanut butter butter bread a, like a six or a seven out of ten. I already knew we were spirit twins. That's the moment I knew. <laughs> uh. Hop, hop, hop. I hate that sound. Did you hear that sound of me hopping off that, like jumping against that, that step? That is the worst sound I have ever heard in my life. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've heard it so much. Listen again. That sound. Ugh. Uh, it's like nails on a chalkboard, really, for me. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, let me, let me read your message now. I was getting in like the jumping, the jumping zone. Let me scroll up really quick. <laughs> yeah, you calm down and then, you know, call them out later. Yeah, I am, I am not a confrontational person at all. Like I wish I would be able to confront people easier. Oops, that was my bad. The wind was not blowing in my direction. I wish I was uh, able to confront people a bit easier, but uh, I avoid confrontation at all costs. I'm like, nope, nothing's bothering me nothing at all <laughs> and I just I'll never say anything about it 
Like, I might make, you know, I, you know, I'll do things like send them multiple confirmations and they'll kind of know something's up. They're like, oh, Siri, you started sending me more than your normal two confirmations. Is it because I canceled on you that one time we were going to go to the mall? And then I'm like, yes. Yes, it is. I, I don't whis whisper it, though. I just, <laughs> I just, uh, I do say yes if somebody, like, calls me out for, you know, the, if, if they think I'm bothered by something, then I come clean. But until that happens, I will not. I'll just take precautionary me measures to see that it doesn't happen again. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at it, though. It was a lot worse when, obviously, I was in high school and I was super anxious all the time about being a teenager. Um, but uh, now that, you know, I've been teaching a little bit um, and all of that, I I've gotten way better at, you know, dealing with disagreements, I like to call them, when they come up. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to be passive aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I try to avoid. Oh, no. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's sometimes, you know, how people, how people deal with it. I, I try to get better at it, though. Oh my gosh, I hate that sound. <laughs> that is the worst. Okay, there we go. I think that must be, I'm trying to think if I have any other pet peeves. You guys can share your pet peeves um, if you want, but I think people, you know, not being punctual or, you know, canceling plans out of the blue, but like all the time, that 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 gets me. Or forgetting plans. I guess that's my my more specific pet peeve. Also, like asking for information. This is probably the same the same sort of thing. But uh, another pet peeve I have is asking for information that's right there in the text that I just sent or the email that I sent, like just like a moment ago. And then like I realized that either, you know, A, they're too lazy to like look, you know, scroll up the screen a little bit or B, they didn't, they never read my message all the way. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, uh, there's some friends where I, you know, I'm still friends with them, obviously, but uh, I, I make my text shorter because I know for a fact if I send a paragraph their way, they're not going to read it all because they've proven to me time and time again that they don't. Because I'll be like, oh, I love this movie. It was blah, 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 blah. If they ask me a question about it, but they're looking for a short answer, I'll give them a long one. And then they would ask me a question about something I just, like, told them about. But I'll still answer. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I guess I, I wrote too much again. <laughs> so, you know, I for for my, uh, you know, childhood friends and people I've known a long time, you definitely, you know, uh, end up figuring out what kind of communication works best. And, you know, how to set up plans and whatnot. I probably think about it way too much, but, you know, you know, if I only have plans once a month, I gotta make sure that they're gonna show up. <laughs> but yeah, I was very, um, what's it called? Like, timid. Timid in high school. I was so quiet. I only, in high school, I had two guy friends. They're, they're my best friends. One of them was like, I don't know, this is gonna sound mean, but he was like kind of like the classic like anime lover, and he would always say like the funniest stuff, comparing everything to anime. He was fa fabulous. And then the other guy that I hung out with a lot, he really liked video games. So I grew up, you know, listening to a lot of, you know, people, a lot of like one of my friends talking about anime and the other person talking about video games. And then we'd also be those kids that would be in the classroom um, during lunch. We'd get like permission to like be in the classroom during lunch when it got really hot outside. And the teachers would always let us, you know, hang out in their classroom while they're there because they know that we won't bother them. <laughs> so we like, we got the, you know, air condition set up. It was, it was pretty good. I'm like, yes, we have, uh, I guess we have the reputation as being nerds, so. <laughs> or dorks or you know not nice kids so you know whenever we ask to have a classroom you know during lunch they'll they'll give it to us <laughs> so that was always fun um 
Yeah, I, and then I knew everybody else. I was also one of those people that, in high school, where I would kind of roam from group to group um, when I wasn't in the classroom with, like, my two BFFs. Uh, I'd kind of be like, I'd hang out with like, you know, the band kids for a little bit, and then, you know, um, now I didn't really hang out with anybody that played sports, except tennis, because I played tennis, um, but like with all the different kinds of groups, I guess, the stereotypical sort of thing, but I always knew a couple of people from every group, so usually at lunch I'd be like, I'd roam the campus probably like two or three times, like I'd do a little lap. And I'd be completely exhausted by the end because, you know, everyone's sitting and eating, but I'm like eating and walking around because <laughs> I wanted to say hi to everybody, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone knew you, but you weren't that close to many people. Yeah. I don't know if everyone knew me. <laughs> I, uh, my biggest accomplishment from high school was that I got voted as the biggest gamer and uh, I, I put like I, I made uh, like my friend at the time made me a uh, kind of like a campaign poster that we posted all over social media at the time and I was so happy when I got voted the biggest gamer and uh, yeah it, it was a good moment so I'm in the superlatives so that that's the best thing I could get out of high school <laughs> is to be acknowledged for being the biggest gamer. And I'm sure people only voted for me because they saw all the posters everywhere. I was like campaigning, man. You weren't allowed to campaign. It was very hush-hush. Like, you know, don't tell anybody that you're making these posters and stuff and giving them to people. <laughs> with your face on it, with big words. Vote for me for biggest gamer. Um, but no one found out, so I was good. And then, man, the, my biggest mistake, though, was on picture day when I was, like, super proud of myself and I got voted the voted, voted, votist, I got voted the big, biggest gamer. Um, we had picture day. And for some reason, I didn't come prepared with anything. And when I got to picture day, I realized that everyone who was doing their superlatives had, like, some sort of prop or outfit that you know, match their superlative. So, of course, like, the football guy or, you know, whatever the sport superlative of the year was, they, um, they were holding a football or they'd be wearing their football jersey. And then, like, the other guy, because it was a boy and girl that got voted the biggest gamer, so I was the girl, and then the boy, he had, like, some sort of costume on or something. <laughs> and I look down, I look at myself, I'm like, oh, no, I'm just wearing, like, a regular shirt. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And for some reason, my my friend at the time, I don't know why he had this, but he had a Timo hat, and I loved I I didn't I don't like Timo. Don't don't get me wrong, but uh, I played League of Legends at the time, so my my su superlative picture is me dressed up as Timo. So there there you go. That's that's forever there somewhere. <laughs> And I look at it and I'm like, oh man, why didn't I pick a better game? Why did I why did I not prepare and get stuck with Teemo? <laughs> Anyways, that was too that was I, I ranted on for way too long for such a short story. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, a true gamer doesn't need a prop. For sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then it kind of reminds me of now. I, I want to get, like, a, a new tattoo, right? Um, it's been a couple years. I have two currently, but I want to get a video game tattoo. And I'm having flashbacks to my, you know, uh, being the biggest gamer superlatives. And I'm like, if I got a get video game tattoo, like, what would it even be of? So I know eventually I do want to get a video game related tattoo because, you know, video games have been such a big part of my life, honestly. But I'm like, oh, I can't settle on anything. <laughs> you know, there's not a time limit for it or anything. I'm not rushing. But uh, I, I think about it a lot. And when I'm playing games, I'm like, ooh, could this be the one? And then I'm like, probably not. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't choose one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And what's wrong with 
love being skinny, Mons. You you can have tattoos and be and be like super skinny, like lanky. <laughs> I love the word lanky, by the way. That's gotta be part of my like top ten words. Yes, I have like a top ten words list. I gotta write it down so I remember all of them. But lanky is definitely one of them. <laughs> um this is, I'm gonna sound like such a, such a fangirl. But Ronnie, what is it? Ronnie Radke, right? The, the singer for Falling in Reverse. Yes, I do like that band. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but he's a skinny guy. He's got a lot of tattoos and I think, I think he looks good. I mean, he started getting more muscly, but if you look at his earlier pictures, like he's more lanky. I think it's, his name's Ronnie and it's Radke or something like that. R-A-D-K-E. Anyways, he's, he was pretty skinny. Lanky boy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, my, my, when anybody would be like, oh, who do you like in high school or whatever? Like, what's your type? I'd be like, tall, tall and lanky. <laughs> and nerdy. People are like, okay, we don't have to worry about liking the same boys then. <laughs> I'm like, nope, don't worry about me. Oh my gosh, I hate that sound. Oh, oh my gosh, that is so cute, Em. I love, I, I actually, yeah, I love that idea. I've thought, I've actually thought about that same idea before, like getting, uh, you know, small, like, you know, uh, when I do get married, like, you know, small wedding ring tattoos of some sort for underneath. Oh my gosh. That is so cute. That's the cutest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> yeah. All I have is ear piercing. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I do have a belly button piercing. In which case, I always forget that I have it. My boyfriend's like, when's the last time you changed your belly button piercing? <laughs> and I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I know. TMI. <laughs> so I have one, two, three. I mean, you count the ears as one, right? And I got my, my ears pierced when I was, um, when I was like one. It was like one of those things where like you take your baby to get their ears pierced. <laughs> it was just like a normal thing, I guess, according to my mom. So I've always grown up with pierced ears. <laughs> <laughs> hi Mel how are you doing Mel wait did I ever say hi to you yet no I don't think I have how are you doing Mel <laughs> Mel's coming in with the with the zinger okay oh okay that's that's what I thought I scrolled up the chat and I, I, I found like I said hi before I'll say hi again Hello, welcome back. <laughs> We're talking about uh, piercings now and whatnot. In which case, my belly button piercing, or the ring in, in my belly button. I Why am I describing this to you guys? <laughs> I haven't changed it in a million bajillion years. It's just because I don't want to walk into freaking Spencer's or Claire's. <laughs> and I don't want to order it online. I don't know. I don't know, I want to see it in person, but I don't want to have to go to <laughs> Spencer's or Claire's, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no, no, I, no. <laughs> Ow, my ears bleed every time. I could change it, but I don't, I, I don't know where they all went. Like, all the rings or whatever. Nor do I really, you know. They usually come in packs that are like 5 to $10. And then I think about all the things I could spend my money, you know, 5 to $10 on. And then I remember that food exists. So I always end up buying food that I shouldn't buy. <laughs> like, expensive food rather than, you know, get more belly bone piercings. It's fine. It's fine. It's like a... a you know, like a silver one, the classic silver one. At least I'm not stuck with like a dangly, you know, belly button ring. 
<laughs> but I digress. <laughs> okay, let me up. Let me up, let me up, let me up. Let me up. Oh no! Don't let me down! <laughs> yeah, I think I got my belly button ring when I was 18. Yeah, it was 18. The When I was really trying to be, uh, you know, rebellious. I mean, it wasn't that rebellious, but I, I always really wanted one, but it was when I was 18. I was able to get one without my parents' permission. And I hit it really well. <laughs> Until, you know, one day, my mom was like, you have to go swimming with us. And I'm like, oh no. And then, you know, I went swimming and they're like, oh, you have a piercing? Gasp. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, mom, I'm being rebellious at 18 by just getting my belly button pierced and nothing else. I'll still get straight A's for you <laughs> and do everything else. But this belly button piercing is mine. <laughs> you know, I'm sure we had a really dramatic conversation afterwards. <laughs> Ooh, Soma, nice. Spooky game. Oh, yeah, perfect for me. I got it for free on uh, on Epic Games Store, I think, like a month or two ago. Soma was free on Epic, I believe. Hey, Bobando, how's it going? Oh, I say as I fall flat on my face. <laughs> oh, gotcha, Em. Yeah. Your parents also didn't improve. Mm hmm. That's like, you know, tattoos and piercings are like the classic, you know, ways to you know, piss off your parents, I feel. <laughs> and like the top five ways, you know, to piss off your parents is to get a piercing or a tattoo. All right. So what I've really been wanting to talk about is the fact that I, <laughs> this is, does nothing to do with piercings. This has nothing to do with piercings has nothing to do with movies or TV shows or whatever we've been talking about. But I have been looking for the PlayStation game. I, I looked for it one time, one time, right? I was like, oh, is, you know, is my Disney kitchen a PlayStation game? And now I get emailed about my Disney kitchen so many times I, I want it to stop. <laughs> Somebody mentioned My Disney Kitchen, and it's like this kid's game where you're cooking. And I looked at this game, and I looked at the screenshots, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the moment that I hated cooking. This is what messed me up. This is why I can't... <laughs> this is why I can't cook, and this is why I have to always order to go and stuff. I'm just cursed because of this game. So I, I saw it on this game review. I forget what it was. It must have been like, you know, top 10 kids games or something. I watch a lot of top 10 videos, but that's not the main point here. The main point is that I played my Disney Kitchen and now I want to own it on PlayStation. So I made the mistake of looking it up on, uh, you know, on Google, on eBay, you know, just looking it up. And now I just get emails and ads for like a bunch of baby games <laughs> and I can't stop it. <laughs> I think they think I have a child now because of what I'm looking up. I also get advertised diapers. I'm like, please stop. <laughs> please. Please. I'm <laughs> I, I made a mistake. I'm just 25. I just wanted to the nostalgia and <laughs> now you're advertising diapers to me <laughs> and other like baby games. Oh my gosh. It's the, I don't know, it's got to be up there in like the, you know, the worst, the worst thing that I've been like advertised, just constant baby diapers, constant baby games. Today eBay's like, oh my gosh, Sierra, we found Disney Kitchen for you. It's uh, $11, but it's $20 shipping. Like, do you want it? And I keep deleting these emails and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want it. And and they just keep sending them to me. They won't stop. <laughs> I gotta, I just gotta turn off, you know, I gotta turn off the recommendations for Amazon, the recommendations for eBay. I, I gotta just stop being so lazy and go into those darn settings <laughs> and stop it because it's getting out of control. But what I can't stop is the ads that come up on certain web pages and stuff or like YouTube videos. 
Um, especially when I'm on, on my PS4 and I can't block the ads, right? That's when it's that's when it's getting dire for me. <laughs> yeah, the only diaper, adult diapers. Yeah, nope, nope. It's just just for babies because I've been looking up baby games apparently. But uh, if any, long story short, if any of you have Dis my Disney kitchen, let me know. I will I will pay you, but not thirty dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, I was, I, I burnt everything in that game. And now I burn things in real life, and I think, I think that my Disney kitchen has cursed me. I really, really believe it. Oh, come on. Ah! Oh, I always fall through that, that tiny, tiny, like, hole. Is that a hole? That's not even a hole. It's like the split between, like, two mountain peaks. I always fall between that. I'll get I'll get lucky and then we'll get past it. <laughs> or I just gotta wait until the wind stops blowing so hard. Either or. Will it be luck or skill? Which one will it be? There we go. Nice. That was pretty lucky. But yeah, I I I I, I now really want to play my Disney Kitchen just because I talked about it <laughs> because I saw a little bit of gameplay of it. <laughs> I also think, um, why do I, I don't know if you're still here, Glitter Witch, um, or if you could tell me, M, but was, uh, Glitter Witch playing Putt-Putt? Why do I think that she was playing Putt-Putt, like, a week ago? Because I got, like, total nostalgia from watching her play Putt-Putt or something, and it was the same game that I played as a kid, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to play Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo right now. <laughs> That's what I need to do right now. So, I've also been thinking about Putt-Putt and Pajama Sam a lot. I guess, I guess, uh, Jump King is just scaring me back into wanting play, wanting to play easy, uh, childhood games. Because uh, at least I could be good at something. Putt-Putt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that little car that talks and stuff. It was before the movie Cars was popular. In which case, I still see faces on cars, and sometimes it's terrifying. Ever since I watched the movie Cars, whenever I look at a car face on, I always, I always look at it, you know, I always imagine that it's from that movie. But, you know, that that's besides the point. Whoop. I don't know how many people would want to watch me play <laughs> play a children's game. Maybe it would be like a one-off thing where I explore a bunch of different children's game games. I think like the first 30 minutes would be fun because it'd be me remembering all of my memories asso associated with that game. Remembering memories. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> you know, all the memories coming back associated to that game, but I don't think I'd want to beat it necessarily because that just is a, it's a time commitment, you know? But games like Putt Putt and uh, Sly Fox, was it? Yeah, Sly Fox. In the case of the dry cereal, games like that are aren't that long. I think they're only like an an hour to three hours long, if I remember correctly. Another childhood game that I would not want to play. So talking about the opposite side of the spectrum is. Uh, I was recently reminded that The Lion King exists as a game. I think it's on the Nintendo 64. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But I remember playing that as a kid. It's just, you know, it's way too hard to be a kid's game. And I heard that Lion King for the N64 was so hard because they they wanted you to, like, buy the game or rent it for longer. So it was kind of like a marketing thing in a way. Um, but I played Lion King and I got stuck on, like, that monkey level where the monkeys are throwing you around. Um, I don't know if I ever got past that. But, uh, man, that game is brutal for kids. It's like, you know, the equivalent of Jump King. <laughs> but, like, with bad, bad controls. <laughs> and you're like a child playing this game that's just breaking your heart. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really, really difficult to play. Oh, yeah, I think it was for the Game Boy as well. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think, I think Camel cursed me. 
I, I got through this snowy area, like, pretty quickly the first time around, and then Camel's like, it was just luck, and then all of a sudden, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I think Camel's a, a witch, and he, he cursed me. That's my working theory right now. I would be doing fine if he hadn't said anything. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh no. Oh no, it's I'm just getting lucky. That's all it is. <laughs> We're all cursed. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay, let me through, let me through. Okay, this is good. Now we wait. Let me through! Dang it. <laughs> if I say let me through enough, will it will it actually let me go? Hmm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We've gotten so close to. It's only it's only a matter of time. That's it. Oh, jump too early. I also I'm trying to think of other cooking games that I've played, going back to the whole my Disney kitchen thing. Um, I also played Cooking Mama growing up, but I played a lot of it on the, the Wii, I think it was. I played way too much Cooking Mama for the Wii. I thought it was fantastic because, you know, motion controls were brand new and all of that, that fun stuff um, that I didn't think was possible before. And then there's like this cute, you know, lady that wants me to like crack eggs and stuff and make delicious recipes. And, uh, I, I did like that game. I don't know why that didn't give me a love for cooking. <laughs> I, I need that love for cooking again. Which is, I, I never had it, but I, I would like, I would like it now. So I could stop making, you know, frozen taquitos for the millionth time this week. <laughs> or loaded potato soup. I feel like a potato. <laughs> Having loaded potato soup in the same week, even if it's separated by six days, is too many. It's too many. It's too filling. It's good. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, you start feeling like a potato. And I don't know how to describe that, but it's, it's real. <laughs> Alright. Once I get up here, I will close the window because the light is trying to get me. Blinded by the light. <laughs> Blinded by the light. All right, let me get up here. Ah, perfect. All right, let me quickly close the window. I'm keeping it open though, or I'm keeping the window itself open though, so the wind might try to play some pranks on us. So pardon. Pardon me if the light doesn't go away completely. <laughs> Hopefully when I move to my new place, we won't have this uh, lighting issue. There we go. Sometimes I get it right on the first try. That, it's, it's a mini miracle. <laughs> You've mastered the art of, yeah, putting pizza in the oven. Exactly. I, I think I mentioned this before. I, I learned how to use the oven when I was 21. For some reason, my mom didn't think it was an important skill to know or that, like, you know, that an oven was really, really dangerous because she never taught me how to use one. <laughs> she just told me one day and I'm like, yeah, like, she, she would, ref she did not want me around the oven. So I never, I never used an oven till maybe 20, 21, around that age. And I'm like, I need to know this skill. Can you just tell me really quick? She still seemed a little hesitant. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not that clumsy. Just tell, just tell me how to use an oven. <laughs> I've eaten microwave food. Yep, microwave food doesn't even bother me. I got a stomach of steel now from living off microwave food. <laughs> and raw potatoes, yeah. I still microwave way too many things. And now we have like a mini oven, you know, a toaster oven, I should say. I have a toaster oven um, at my place and I use the toaster oven more than I do uh, the actual oven. I only use the actual oven if I'm making pizza. Toaster oven is very nice. <laughs> it's 
you know, it's about it's smaller than my microwave. <laughs> yeah, if I had like a really cool setup, I think I told Camel once that I wanted to, it would be so funny if when he did a cooking stream, we did like a co-op cooking stream where we were making the same thing. Obviously his would come out way better than mine, but <laughs> I always thought that'd be a funny idea. <laughs> to do uh, like a cook off, but it wouldn't be much of a competition because I'm not good at cooking at all. Oh, this is good. Uh oh, the wind stopped. Hmm, <laughs> never mind. Oh. I make a lot of pasta. Pasta is probably my, my favorite thing to make because it's so easy, you know. It's nothing fancy, obviously. I just, the pasta's already made. I, I boil that and then have the sauce on the side. Bada, bada bing, bada boom, you got some pasta with sauce. My boyfriend and I always disagree, though, about how the sauce should be prepared. Because he cooks the sauce with the pasta and then the pasta ends up being all uh, soggy and gross. And I'm like, no, you gotta, you gotta put the pot, the sauce in a different, you know, in a different, uh, you know, cooking, cooking way, in a different, uh, pot, that's the word I'm looking for, and then only put the sauce when it's ready to be served, like, on top of the pasta, and it just blew his mind. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I know, I, 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 I know one cooking thing. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a real cooking thing. I think it is, because, you know, obviously the sauce would make the pasta, um, darn it, would make the, I'm like falling all over the place here. The sauce would make the pasta soggy. That's what I wanted to say. Let me through! Oh, I bumped my head. <laughs> al dente. What's al dente mean? That sounds like a familiar term that I should know. Oh! Oh, did you see that jump? Mwah! Beautiful. Oh, gosh. Okay, it's fine. This is fine. I think if I do a full jump here, I can make it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes, I can. All right, I'm excited. Okay, we're here. All right, hold on. I gotta be a try hard for a second here. Please forgive me. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, when I get hungry, I, I want to eat right away. That's also a bad thing. Like, when I'm hungry, I just microwave something. I just need that instant gratification of having food. Because when I'm hungry, it's too late. <laughs> you can't stop me. You can't stop me from microwave some micro microwaving something really quick. I don't know what to do here. I'm scared. Can I full jump, maybe, and get over there? I'd probably hit my head, though. Hmm. I'm so scared. No! No, let me through! Let me through! Okay, we can try this again. Oh, okay, that's fine. Wait for the wind to blow all the way to the right. And then I will talk about food some more. <laughs> Slow cooker. Oh, man, you have to have a lot of foresight to use that kind of thing, though. Oh, man. Okay, we will... Try again later. Oh my gosh. I just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. My my uh, my mom used to do that a lot. Like using a slow cooker to cook some things. Oh my gosh. I didn't jump. I didn't jump enough. I know. Ah! My fingers are about ready to fall off. <laughs> All right. I push I push the controller way too much. When I use a controller, like I I press the buttons like my life depends on it. As if, you know, the buttons can can sense how hard you're pushing on them. Mel says it's gross. Gross. Oh, and for you guys who haven't seen my last stream, did you see, or my last Jump King stream, 
do you, do you see these sweet shoes I got? I have made it up this snowy mountain before. And I got my sweet, sweet shoes. So now I got cool wing shoes and I got the cool hat that are optional. So my character is pretty sweet right now. Besides the fact that I keep falling back down. <laughs> my past 3,000? We've made it to 3,086 already. 3,086 falls. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I... I like stuff like that where like the, you know, if the meat is cooked so much it falls off the bone. I usually like that. The thing I don't like is, uh, fat. If I see, f why can't I, I need to jump more there. Um, if I like see fat on like a piece of meat or something, I, I can't eat it. The fat grosses me out way too much. So while I can eat meat, I'm, you know, I'm very picky when it comes to it. Oh, I can't, I can't. ugh. I don't know why I keep doing wimpy jumps. Okay, let me let me go full try hard mode really quick. Just jump. Oh my god, I jumped too much. No, and then once I get here, you gotta fall back to the bottom. I mean, not that far, but oh man, <laughs> got kicked out. Oh, really? I wondered where the fat went. You know, that makes sense now that you're describe, you know, explaining it, Zordon. But I had no idea. I guess I always just thought when my mom, you know, slow cooked the different meats that, like, originally the meat didn't have any fat on it. But it makes even more sense that it would melt. I don't know why I didn't make those two connections. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I... I do really like tofu though. Tofu is my jam. And my boyfriend's family is all like vegans. So, you know, every Thanksgiving we don't really have, you know, we don't eat turkey obviously, but we have like this really cool like assortment of, you know, I guess Thanksgiving themed vegan uh, appetizers and whatnot. It is so good. So, so good. I would be a vegan, but I like cheese too much. <laughs> cheese is cheese is my kryptonite. If I if you told me I couldn't have a quesadilla for the rest of my life, I wouldn't. I would uh or you know, a, a quesadilla with real cheese on it, I would be very upset. Yeah, yeah, and you got to I feel like if you want to be a vegan, you have to be, you know, a cook in some way, right? I don't, there's not too many, like, quick options for, you know, being a vegan, like, long term, I don't think. Like, you kind of have to know, like, how to use, you know, the, you know, fruits and vegetables and stuff, so to make sure that you're still eating healthy. That's also something that's intimidating about being a vegan is that I would not know how to feed myself. <laughs> I would just have all these vegetables and I'd be like, well, what do now? And, you know, I'd probably just end up having peanut butter and celery sticks for the rest of my life. Oh, finally we got up here. <laughs> yeah, and I've tried vegan cheeses. I'm trying to find something to substitute it. Um, but it, it does not taste anywhere near the same. Maybe if there's someday, you know, a cheese substitute that tastes just like cheese, then I would go vegan you know but and I do but I do like sushi as well so that would also be another issue I would have <laughs> is uh, giving up sushi I didn't used to like sushi when I was a kid I thought it was disgusting but as an adult I I love sushi so much more specifically like salmon su sushi like salmon sashimi Philadelphia roll that sort of thing that is my jam that's how I how I treat myself whenever you know something good happens I'm like, we gotta go get sushi. But when it comes to sushi, I, I don't have anything else except the two things I mentioned. Just salmon, sashimi, and Philadelphia rolls. Uh, California rolls are decent. It's basically just uh, cucumber and crab, I think. And, you know, maybe something else. But, uh... I don't know. Salmon, salmon's like the best food ever. Ah! 
Oh man, I'm I'm messing it up. Okay, we gotta wait for the wind to blow. There we go. But uh, I think one thing that that I have had that's really good vegan, like I can, I honestly can hardly tell the difference. But I think it's mixed in with other things as well. But um, my my boyfriend's family makes like the best like vegan scramble you'll ever have. So it's like you know fake eggs, um, like an egg substitute, and then it has pepper in it and a couple of other things. And I think I ser they serve it with salsa sometimes. Oh my gosh, it is to die for. It is so, so good. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, even though I love eggs, you know, just eating eggs in the morning. <laughs> um, I'm reminding myself of that one girl from the Amanda show. Um, but, uh, you know, I love eating eggs in the morning. This is like you know, a really good substitute for eggs. They have pretty good substitutes for that out there. If you want to be vegan, but you also still want to have like scrambled eggs in the morning. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's particularly good. Um, there's also like this really bomb like uh, vegan pumpkin and chocolate chip bread that I've had. Um, and that's fantastic as well. Like the different kinds of breads that, that are vegan. Which, which I assume is a lot, right? So I don't know why I said that, but there's really good pumpkin and chocolate chip bread out there. Vegan chocolate chips. Okay, go, go, go! Oh no! <laughs> there must be a way to get over there. A little bit easier. I'm gonna try to find a shortcut. I say as I fall all the way back down to the bottom. If I find, you know, shortcuts like I have been finding, like places where I can do a full jump, I'll be able to get through this area so much faster. So I'm thinking, I will show you guys the spot I'm thinking of, but uh, I think once we get like a screen or two above this point, we can uh, get to a place where we can full jump, where I haven't before, and it might be easier to get, uh, you know, out of this area. We will find out. Oh, that was a little bit too far. All right, now I wait. Bum bum bum. There we go. These gargoyles are freaking me out, man. Here we go. Oh, why do I keep jumping? Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, okay. There we go. Then we jump this way. Perfect. Okay, and I'll show you guys the area that I'm kind of thinking of. Uh, that first step right there, we might be able to do a full jump to the left to get to uh, the other platform. So, oh. <laughs> if I would have landed that, I would have shown you my idea. Hopefully we can get there semi semi quickly so I can show you guys what I was thinking of again. I promise it's it's a decent idea. Gotta find those those tricks. Okay, so we're gonna get to that first step somehow. And then we're gonna throw ourselves. Oh <laughs> Okay, it didn't work. It didn't it's still not working. Why am I still throwing myself? Alright, we'll just have to I guess not full jump over there and actually do a quality jump to get past that part. That's that's fine. The areas before it aren't too too bad. I heard that this jump is actually the hardest one in this area. In which case I'm getting a little bit better at it. Alright, there we go. Very nice. Um, so, on top of watching, so I watched Talladega Nights, right? Ricky Bobby thing, like, a maybe a week, a week or two ago, I watched that movie. Um, I also, I did watch a documentary, it was a dinosaur documentary, and it was, like, a special from Walking with the Dinosaurs, 
And this show, man, it's on Curiosity Stream. Um, you could probably also find it on uh, Amazon, but you might have to pay for it um, if you don't have like the add-on subscription like I do. Um, but basically, Walking with the Dinosaurs, it's... I wish I remembered the exact name of it, but it, there's this one guy, and he's talking about the dinosaurs, right? And they have, like, CGI effects and stuff, you know, emulating that they're actually there with him. And he, the story is that he's a time traveler. <laughs> oh, Sea Monsters. The one that I watched was Walking with Dinosaurs, Sea Monsters. So if you would look it up, you'll find it right away under Sea Monsters. And he travels, you know, different timelines and stuff, trying to find sea monsters so he can swim with them and or ride them. And it's just a fantastic, it's a fantastic show. It's like only three or four episodes. And he, he finds like the top eight, you know, best sea monsters. And he always gets in like mortal peril. And the first episode was amazing because there's these things called sea scorpions that were following him. And, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, you're going to get hurt. But you don't actually think he's going to get hurt because you're like, oh, it's a documentary for kids. Like, he's not going to get hurt. But then in the first episode, he's looking for this sea monster. And, you know, the sea scorpion isn't even the sea monster he's looking for. You know, there's way worse things out here because it's, uh, you know, episode one. It's not going to get that crazy yet. And this sea scorpion just gets at him and he's, like, bleeding. And it, it basically, like you know, claws at his ankle and it like shows actual blood. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like this CGI sea scorpion from, you know, the prehistoric past attacking this man. And the man's a pretty, he, he's a pretty good actor. Um, I felt like I was there with him and he would talk to like his team and for only one of the episodes, he didn't do it for the rest, but on this Sea Scorpion episode, he had, like, this air tank with him, because he kept complaining how he couldn't breathe the air, because I get it wasn't, you know, it wasn't suitable for humans at that time. He never mentions it again, but at this particular time period that he, you know, he's getting bitten up by Sea Scorpions, but he's also, you know, has a, like, a kind of, like, an air tank attached to him, and he's, like, breathing through it. Um, so that also adds, like, a sense of realism to it. But every time he breathes in this air tank, he's, like, you know, he, he, he's acting, right? He's not actually breathing in an air tank. I know. Like, I, I shouldn't say that. He, he, you know, he's really a time traveler. I shouldn't, uh, you know, not knock it off, but, uh, <laughs> knock it for what it is. But, uh, he puts on his mask and, like, there's, like, he doesn't put it all the way against his face. And that that broke the realism for me. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I was totally on board for you getting attacked by like sea scorpions. But like, he's like, oh, I need to breathe through this mask. And then he like, he barely even puts it over his mouth. It's like on his nose and his eyes sometimes because he grabs it so fast. And you think that they do a separate take, but they don't. And you know, you're like, if you're really using that to breathe, you would probably not be getting much air from your air tank, honestly. So I was a little bit, you know, disappointed by that. But everything else in Sea Monsters is amazing. <laughs> it's very funny. It's, uh, you know, he's really a time traveler. So it's cool to see, you know, what, you know, it used to look like back then. Looking for sea monsters. And uh, there's quite a few instances where he, like, grabs the sea monster <laughs> from, like, the tail and stuff and starts riding it. Um, I think this is also the first episode, but he grabs this, uh, something that looks like a plesiosaurus, but it's not a plesiosaur. Um, he grabs something that looks like a plesiosaur, and he, he ends up ripping off the tail. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, I'm riding this dinosaur, this sea monster. Oh my gosh, this is the best day of my life. And then all of a sudden there's blood everywhere in the water, and he, he ripped this tail off from this dinosaur, and I felt... I felt bad for this fictional dinosaur. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. It'll grow back. <laughs> and then he rides, like, you know, two or three other sea monsters uh, in the series. And, you know, I I'd like to imagine that that's his goal in life. You know, not to learn about the sea monsters, but to, you know, be the first man to ride, like, all of the, <laughs> you know, the marine, the marine, uh, ancient marine, uh, you know, dinosaurs or animals, um, all the ancient reptiles back, back in the day, 
but uh, you know, I'm not giving it enough enough credit. You just have to see it to believe it for yourself. I think it was made in 2004, and it's pretty impressive. It looks good. It looks very good for its time. I think the care the main character's name is Nigel, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Nigel Nigel is a character. He's he's fantastic. And there's this other, I think he has two or three different documentaries where it's like the same kind of style. Where he's pretending that he's a, like a time lord. And he's going through time meeting these dinosaurs. <clears throat> so, if you ever like, oh, what should I do on on a Saturday night? That's, that's what I'm re recommending. <laughs> Is to watch Sea Monsters or one of Nigel's other crazy adventures. Um, from like the Walking with Dinosaurs series. It's, it's great. There's so many funny moments. Jump over here. And then he, of course he brings his crewmen too. So then they kind of act out like what they're going to do. Like they're going to go see, um, what were, gonna, what were they going to see? I think they're going to see like an ancient shark, um, the Megalodon, I believe. And then, like, there's this whole scene that is probably unnecessary, but it's about, like, the the crew, the fake crew, you know, arguing about whether they should go see a baby Megalodon or the real Megalodon first. And Nigel's like, oh, we gotta see the real Megalodon. He's, like, fearless, even though, like, the episode prior he got, like, bitten up and almost killed by, like, these small sea scorpions. He's like, oh, I don't, you know, danger is my middle name. Like, we gotta go do this. And... These people are really good actors because they really seem, you know, to be done with, uh, <laughs> done with Nigel at this point. And then Nigel's like, fine, we'll go see this, you know, this dumb baby Megalodon. <laughs> it's not even as good as a regular Megalodon. I want to be in mortal danger. <laughs> yeah, I'm selling you DVDs now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. And he uses his, his real name. So, oh my gosh, if Nigel sponsored me, <gasps> I would just fangirl so much. I'm his biggest fan now. Just because I watched, like, you know, two movies of him pretending that he's actually with dinosaurs. It's brilliant. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Alright, I'm being very careful around this area now. I'm trying to remember some other funny parts as well. Um, and then, I besides sea monsters, there was another... Um, you know, dinosaur sort of thing that he did. And it was like the search for the giant tooth, it was called. Something about teeth. But like at the beginning, he's like, oh, I'm looking for this this big carnivore that this tooth belongs to. And he shows like a tooth that's like as big as his head and his torso combined. So a very large dinosaur tooth. And he's like, oh, I'm looking for a carnivore. And we were like, oh my gosh, I wonder what it's going to be. And the whole like kind of mini movie is him wandering around in the past trying to track you know these footprints that he's finding these giant dinosaur footprints and you know kind of tracking where this dinosaur is so we can find out what it is but like halfway through the movie not even halfway it's like the first 15 minutes the first 15 minutes he finds something that's pretty you know that that's a pretty big indicator that what we're looking for isn't what he thinks it is there's like these tracks and they lead to, uh, you know, I can't say this any other way. It leads to like dinosaur dung, right? Dinosaur poop. And he looks at it and gets his face all close to it. I thought he was going to like lick it or something. <laughs> I'm like, Nigel's a weird enough dude. He could just like, you know, it wouldn't, it would bother me, but it wouldn't be out of character for him to like <laughs> do something crazy like that. But he's like putting his hands in it and stuff. I should I should stop describing this. But basically he comes to the conclusion. He com I'm cracking myself up right now. He comes to the conclusion that the dinosaur that that the dung that he found is is a herbivore. Or that has a lot of plants and stuff in it. And he's like, Oh my gosh, like there's so many like plants, like it smells really sweet. He describes what he's smelling. <laughs> and he's like Wow, that's really weird for a carnivore. <laughs> and I'm like, Nigel, my dude, I just watched you, you know, 
go face to face with a megalodon and tell me all these crazy facts about all these dinosaurs. But, like, when you see tracks leading up to, like, a pile of dung, that's obviously what you're trying to track, and it's only plants, you're like, hmm, that's weird for a carnivore. And he doesn't question it at all. And basically, the plot twist at the end of the movie, sorry, I, I, I probably already spoiled it already, telling you all the details. But, uh, surprise, surprise, it's not a carnivore. It's actually a an herbivore dinosaur that uses its long claws to grab you know, leaves on a tree. <laughs> and he's like, oh my gosh, it's eating, it's eating a plant. And, you know, he makes a big deal out of it and stuff. But I'm like, Nigel, like, I knew that like 40 minutes ago, man. Like, and I don't even study dinosaurs for a living. But, uh, at, at the end of that movie, I forgot to mention it before, but at the end of all of his movies, I truly believe that he dies. <laughs> I think that his true folly is his love for dinosaurs. <laughs> and I really truly believe that he dies at the end of all of his films. So for this one, he's like, oh my gosh, like it's, you know, this big claw belongs to an herbivore. And it ends up, a T-Rex shows up at the end. And he's like, oh my gosh. And the herbivore ends up scaring off the T-Rex because they're both the same size and it's able to stand its ground and stuff. And it's kind of a cool battle. It just claws the T-Rex once and the T-Rex backs off. So I guess not a cool battle. But, it, you know, from a, a, a human's perspective, it looked amazing. And right after the battle, he's like, oh my gosh, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go touch. I'm gonna go touch the dinosaur. And you just see the cameraman hiding in a bush. And he's just, he's filming Nigel, like, slowly walking up to the dinosaur and putting his hand out. And then, like, as soon as he gets to the dinosaur, it looks down at him, and all the other dinosaurs look at him, and the screen goes black. So, like, Nigel, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to get from that? Obviously, I'm gonna think that you got, you got smushed, or, you know, clawed up by these herbivores. <laughs> That's, I don't know, they just cut at, like, the worst moments where he, like, d decides to do something incredibly stupid. And then it's like, oh, the, sh the movie slash TV show is done now. That's, that's it. That's, that's his story. And I didn't mention this, but in the Sea Monsters one, the Sea Monsters movie that Nigel is in is even more damning to the, to the point of me thinking that he dies. Because he sees the Megalodon, right? You know. You know, N Nigel, he, he ends up getting a good look at the Megalodon. He's like, oh my gosh, we, we did such good work today, guys. Let's go to sleep. And then they all go to sleep in the boat. <laughs> and the last thing you see is there's a sensor on the boat, right? And it shows whatever big fish are around. It tracks, you know, underwater what's coming near. So it's like, you know, a, a, a classic, you know, sensor, underwater sensor. And the end of the movie, I'm not even lying, the end of the movie is a bunch of shapes that look like Megalodon. There's like a dozen of them around all sides of the ship and they just get closer and closer until they get to the ship and then that's the end of the movie. So I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this Time Lord just keeps dying in all these different, like, you know, all these different prehistoric times and that's, that's his, his gimmick. I think there's one more movie that I need to watch, but oh my gosh, the two movies that I watched, you know, The Search for the Big Tooth and The Sea Monsters, they both end in a way that I'm like, nope, he, Nigel's definitely dead. <laughs> I don't know how he could get, get out of being surrounded by, you know, 12 Megalodon. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, wait. I think we might actually make this. Mm, throw myself. We did it. We did it. All I needed to do was talk about dinosaurs for 20 minutes, and we we did it, guys. We did it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is as far as I've ever gotten. Let's see what's up here. Oh, my gosh. It's a, it's a chapel. Beautiful. I'm just kidding. I hate this sound. Oh, it's the steps I hate so much. Why are steps so hard for you? You're all legs. Shouldn't you be really good at walking up steps? Oh, no. All right. Hey, Burger, how are you? Uh, we we just got out of the slippy, slidey ice world. <laughs> We've been stuck there for two hours <laughs> since I started the stream, but 
now we are in this beautiful church area. Oh, yes. I am so happy. Um, but yes. Watch, watch SeaWorld. Also, Nigel, please, please, uh, what's it called? Pr promote me? No. Please, uh, pay me to advertise you because I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> As if Nigel from Sea Monsters is ever going to see this. So apparently he has a website, right? Because I looked up this guy after watching Sea Monsters and the, in and the, the, dinosaur tooth movies i'm like oh my gosh nigel is my favorite person now and apparently for like 25 pounds you can get a video message from nigel and i'm like oh my gosh i just really i really want to do it and just like write you know have him pretend to be his character his time traveling character and like tell me about the time he saw a plesiosaur because that would just give me life that would be amazing but I guess he's like, I don't know. He hasn't done anything as of recent. He's still like a nature cons cons con conservationist. That was a really hard word for me to say for a second. He still like does stuff with, you know, dinosaurs. But nothing as exciting as when he pretended to be a time lord. Um, so he, he has his own website, which I thought was really exciting. Okay, so what's going on here? <laughs> yes. I'm glad I can't fall out. Um, I think I should I should get on here first. Oh. I, I have to jump from, like, pole to pole. Okay. I'm a pro. Look at me. Look at me now. Look at me now. Oops. <laughs> I found a couple double jumps. I don't know what it means, but I found it. Fair and square. I'm so glad I can't fall back from that. Right, and there's no wind here, so the wind can't help me. Oh, man! I, I walked right off of it. Nope, stay away from me, ice. Man, I need to watch more ridiculous movies or documentaries so I can explain it to you guys because I think explaining it it's way funnier than <laughs> I mean they're both pretty funny but I do I do like telling you guys about the weird stuff that I end up watching uh I ended up today you know I, I mentioned before how you know the whole schedule thing for twitch is a little bit weird to me I'm like oh my gosh like twitch is pressuring me to have a twitch schedule and I've never really had that before I usually just tell you guys, you know, I'm going to stream between Friday and Sunday because once I give myself a time that I'm going to stream, I have to stick to that time. Like, I I can't allow myself to go and, you know, to start before or start after a time that I've promised on Twitch. So today I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to stream at 2. And that was just my guess. But I ended up being done with everything I needed to do by 12. Um, yeah, I might as well wear a tie and a name tag. Yeah, I have, I, I tried the schedule out for this week. So I do have a schedule for this weekend. Don't know if I'll be doing it in the future because it's so, it's so stressful. And I'm just like, you know, I, I should stream whenever I have the time and, you know, when I, when I want to stream, that sort of thing. But, you know, between Friday and Sunday, like I've been doing, and that's been fairly successful. I let you guys know on Discord and Twitter when I'm going to stream. Uh, but today I said I was going to stream at two and I was done at 12. And I'm like, well, what the heck am I going to do for two hours while I'm waiting to stream? So I could have started, like, you know, at 12, the stream, and then stream for longer. I apologize. But, like, I was literally constrained by, the, the, you know, the schedule itself. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, people, you know, what if somebody did look at the schedule? And they're like, oh, Sierra's going to stream at 2. I'm going to, you know, do something until 2. I hope I don't miss the stream. I was thinking about, like, that one person that might be using my schedule right away, which probably doesn't exist. But, uh, anyways, I ended up watching a show on Netflix, an interactive show, and I kind of regret it. <laughs> I looked up best interactive TV shows on Netflix, and if you don't know what an interactive TV show is... It's basically, you know, when prompts come up on your TV and you tell the characters what to do. So I looked up, 
Oh my gosh, yes, you should send me that, Dragoon. And I still haven't had the chance to watch that video you sent me of the other battle bots. But, because I keep forgetting that it's there, but I do like the battle bot videos you send sometimes. Um, so, anyways, I, I did an interactive, uh, you know, TV series on Netflix. And, or I looked up the top eight. And number one was Minecraft. <laughs> you know, Minecraft, your story is what it's called. And I looked at it. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm desperate. These are desperate times. I need something to do. Um, <laughs> I need something to do right now. And I want to explore these interactive games. So I ended up playing the first episode of Minecraft, Your Story. And it was, it was okay, I guess. I'm kind of convinced that, you know, Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn and the person who was voices Chloe in Life is Strange is voicing one of the characters in Minecraft. So I like to imagine that it's just Chloe from Life is Strange when I'm playing this, you know, Minecraft Your Story interactive show on Netflix. Um, probably just for my own sanity, so I'm not like, you know, this weird 25-year-old playing a Minecraft TV show game or whatever. Um, but it was it was okay. I stopped playing it because I was like, you know, how much does it matter whether or not, you know, the, the choices were pretty much the same, is, is what I ended up experiencing. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like, you know, it's not really making a, uh, you know, I'm not making a difference with my decision. So then I looked at number two that was on this top eight list that I found on this blog. Um, I can't tell you what blog it is. I Apparently I just listen to any blog. Whatever blog I find first, I'm like... Yep, this is the one. This one knows, you know, what I'll like. But obviously, number one was Minecraft, and I didn't like it. Number two was Black Mirror, um, Bambergeist? Bandergeist? It was Black Mirror. I think I looked it up, didn't I? I'm trying to look here. No, I guess I didn't. <sighs> Black Mirror something, but it's on Netflix, and it was confusing as heck. Like, I've seen a couple Black Mirror episodes, but sometimes it gets a little bit too spooky for me. But this one was all about, like, psychedelics and drugs and stuff. And, like, this this video, this this TV show kept, like, telling me to kill my, my, in, my in-game father. It's like, oh, kill your father or do something else. And it gave you the, the choice to kill your father, like, three times. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because, you know, in... In the TV show, like, you know, I don't... My character's paranoid, and he might do that, but if I have a choice, I'm not gonna, like, commit murder or anything. So for the whole game, I kept saying no, right? Even though, obviously, you know, Black Mirror can get dark at times. Um, you know, it was an M for Mature TV show. I should just say that right off the bat. M for Mature. So it's trying to get me to be, like, this really horrible person. <laughs> and I was just like, no. And then, you know... I'm going to spoil it, so if you guys want to play it, you, maybe you don't want to listen to me for the next minute. But, uh, spoiler alert um, for this, like, 45-minute TV show that you get to interact with. But uh, it, it makes you murder your father. You don't even have the, the choice. <laughs> it doesn't even appear. Just no matter what you do, you end up killing your dad. <laughs> and I didn't even tell him to do that. I was trying to get him away from the dad. I'm like, nope. I'm like, game, I see you. you want me to kill my father, so I'm going to stay out of the house. Whenever he gives me an option to stay far away from him, I will. But it doesn't matter. Your choices don't matter. So I was like, oh my gosh. By the end of it, I was confused. I was like, why? Why do you... <laughs> why is this this TV show, try like, you know, forcing this decision on me? It's not really interactive at all. And then I was like, you know, why why did this blogger put this so high on the list? Because if anything, it was just confusing. It was, you know, I guess it was interesting in parts. Um, but overall, it was confusing and I didn't have a choice in the end. And that's like the worst thing about Telltale games, right? Or, you know, any choice making game is like when you get to the end and you have that realization that, you know, your choices didn't matter. And I'm sure there's, like, hundreds of games that, you know, are the same exact way where your choices don't matter. But, yeah, I don't know. If you guys have any recommendations for interactive TV shows, I don't know if there's any good ones out there, honestly. 
it was just something that I wanted to look into, you know? <laughs> Staying out of jail, exactly. I just wanted him to stay out of jail. And no matter what, you get known as the that one son that killed his dad and went crazy. Very weird. Okay, is there any way I can full jump? Okay, let's get serious really quick. There we go. And then here, right? Okay. Hmm. So I know if I full jump here, we'll land. Whoops. If I stand on the corner, we'll land there. And if I do this, we'll be here. So we know how to make it here fairly reliably. But how do I get anywhere else? I guess I just have to be good at jumping. What's up here? Maybe full jump this way? Aha! Okay. This is good. Uh-oh. <laughs> Darn it. I mean, it's less high stakes than the, the snowy area, for sure. <laughs> I feel a lot better traversing this area than, uh, you know, anything else. <laughs> or I could just get lucky, Popo. I'm, I'm trying to decide as I play this game whether or not I'm just getting lucky or if I'm actually good at it. Um, I, I do admit, I do get lucky a lot of the time. <sighs> what have you been playing lately, Popo? For some reason, I have forgotten. Have you been playing any any good games lately? I am the million monkeys. <laughs> yeah, eventually, you know, there's only only a couple of permutations you can get by doing the same thing over and over again. So one of those accidental permutations must be a successful a successful jump, right? That's how I'm thinking of it. <laughs> Oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh. And Dragoon... Oh, were you, you were you mentioning that a second ago, Dragoon? Lufia. What is... What kind of game is that? Lufia the Legend? Is that like a platformer? Oh, Monster Hunter World. Yes. I have... Uh, when it first came out, I have it on PS4 and PC. I have probably have like a total of 300 hours in the game. But it's been a while since I've last played. Monster Hunter World is fantastic. Okay, let me throw. Mm, okay. Can I throw myself at this? Uh oh. Hmm. That was a weird jump. <laughs> Darn. Oh, okay. JRPG. Now. I'm not, you know, a huge fan of JRPGs. I pro the, pro the closest thing I've ever gotten to really playing JRPGs is like Persona, Shin Megami Tensei, that sort of thing. <clears throat> my, my deal with it, or my gripe with it, I guess, is how long they all are. So I guess my, my question to you would be, how, how long does it take to beat Luffy of the Legend? Is it like one of those games where it's like a hundred plus hours to beat? I don't know why I have this preconception of G JRPGs that they all have to be like a bazillion hours long. I guess it's just my experience with Persona that's informing, you know, me to think that. But, uh, I don't know. Why are JRPGs always so darn long? My attention span is not, is not good enough to play a game that, you know, lasts more than 60 hours. Unless it's a game like, you know, Monster Hunter World, in which case you can invest as much time as, you know, as you want into it to level up and stuff. Uh, what's going on over here? Okay, you got 15 hours, but you're not sure how long it is. Hmm. You're the bagpipe dude, yes! Yes, Popo, that's amazing! I started learning the bagpipe a little bit. I've always been, in all the Monster Hunter games I've played, I have the 3DS one. I also had the Wii, the Wii Monster Hunter. It was actually pretty good. So I've owned three Monster Hunter games. Don't ask me what the actual titles are, but 
the Wii one, the 3DS one, and, you know, the PS4 one. Um, I also have a fourth one that's on Switch that I haven't really played, which I think is a remaster of an older one. Uh, but I digress. But I'm always the hammer user. I love using hammers. Um, and usually I like being a sniper and staying in the back. But for some reason with Monster Hunter, I just... Oh, the hammer is my jam. And then I also started using, uh, not the regular lance, but there's like this, this bug lance or something. Does that sound familiar? I forgot the name of the weapon, but I used to play that in Monster Hunter World specifically. That's also a favorite of mine. The hammer and then that weird bug lance thing. Uh, maybe the gun lance? Why do I think it has to do with a bug? <laughs> it's, I think I'm thinking of the gun lance. What am I doing? Aha! Okay. Ah, yes. Okay, what's up here? <gasps> Ooh, that looks like a new area that I just fell down. <laughs> Why did I do that? The world may never know. Okay. Just do the same thing you just did, but better. Hmm. There we go. Woo! All right. Hmm. Now how to get from this ledge? Oh gosh, there better not be more windy, snowy areas. I'm so done with it. All right. There we go. Okay, what's up here? Ow, hit my head. Oh, no! Oh. Oh, gosh. You see, you see me sliding? Uh. No. No, please, no. <laughs> I don't want a slidey area. I don't, I don't, I do not like the slidey area. Not at all. Uh. Okay. All right. I'm too scared to move. <laughs> Frozen in fear, you could say. Okay, if you want a shorterish game. Okay, Sudokin. Or I, I said that wrong. Sudokin. I'm. <laughs> Is that from Street Fighter? I don't know where that memory came from. Uh, Sukoden. I feel like I've heard of that before, Dragon. Okay. 108 playable characters. Wait, is that a fighting game? Is that Sakodin a fighting game? That's why there's that many playable characters. No! No, it's picked me back up! No, oh, don't do that to me, game. Don't do me dirty like that. I mean, it's not... I'm not even that annoyed. I do like this area. It's very pretty. You know, you just gotta get used to all these darn chandeliers all over the place. Like... My question is, why would you have so many chandeliers that are hanging at different levels? Like, when does that look good? Maybe I'm just not. I'm, maybe I just don't know enough about interior design to know. <laughs> I have gripes with whoever designed these rooms. I have beef with them. <laughs> oh! Okay, I'm getting, uh, what's that what other game called? It's not Sakodin, but there is another game, Pardon for the Light. The wind is blowing, which is really nice, but the light is not, because vertical blinds and whatnot. But I digress. Um, it reminds me of, not Fire Emblem, um, isn't there another JRPG where it's, like, notorious for having large armies and stuff? Hmm, I can't think of the name right now. It's on the tip of my tongue, though. Because they have so many crossovers with, like, other games. What's it called? Hmm. It's, uh... Man, if I had a penny for every time I forgot the name of a game or a movie or a person's name, if I had one penny for that, I would be... I would be a wealthy person. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Bobandal. I appreciate it. Valkyria? No, it's not Valkyria. 
It's the one where you run around like an open battlefield and you just got a bunch of people following you and stuff. Um, hmm. And like they had a Zelt, maybe like a Nintendo crossover with this particular JRPG series. Hmm. If I heard the name, I would know it. If you guys know it, let me know. I've never played it before, so that's why I also can't remember the name. <laughs> wow, a hard copy of, what, Sakodin 2? It's gonna be $200 plus Canadian, wow. That's crazy. Almost as crazy as my, my Disney kitchen for $30. <laughs> 30 whole dollars, you can be in Mickey's kitchen. I'm still salty about how expensive it is. Oops, I just wanna... I just want a physical copy of my Disney kitchen. That's all I want. I'll get lucky someday and find it like a garage sale or something. Do you have Disney kitchen bow bandle for PS1? <laughs> I made- I was talking about this earlier, but I made the mistake of looking it up, so now I just get sent constant emails about Disney Kitchen being sold for like 30 or 50 dollars, and then I keep getting advertised to, uh, to buy diapers. Because <laughs> I guess I'm just- I'm just a giant baby for wanting to replay that game. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes. Yes, I see, you want to play my Disney Kitchen. Well, now you're going to get ads for, you know, buying diapers, because you are a big baby. That's how I'm, that's how I'm interpreting it. Or they think I have a child now, because I keep looking up these kiddish games. <laughs> There's more hidden full jumps? I mean, I believe you, but... Hmm. Okay, I'll look for some. I found two, for sure. One here, right? One here, and then one here. But if there's a hidden, like, a way to get all the way over by just doing these big jumps, I'll do it. <gasps> oh my gosh! Okay, hold on. We're getting somewhere. Oh, just kidding. I think I found two other ones. One, two. Oh. <laughs> I already forgot where they were. <laughs> oh, darn you, my bad memory. Gosh darn it. Uh, jump this way? No, I just did that. Oh my god. Oh no. Why'd you have to make me curious about it? <laughs> now I'm never gonna get past this part. <laughs> okay. So I can full jump to get here. That's good. No. That's not gonna work. Let me practice the full jump again. Full jump here, here, there, and here. Okay, and then I can get up here every time. It's, it takes a, you know, four full jump jumps is kind of a lot, but it's better than constantly falling. Oh, what am I doing? What is this mad, mad lass doing over here? She's a maniac, maniac, it's true. So true. I don't know the actual lyrics of the song Maniac by Who Knows Who. Alright, here we go. Watch the four, the four, four, oh gosh. Four, four full jumps. I can't say that ten times fast. Don't even, don't even ask. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can barely say it once. <laughs> four full jumps. Four, four full jumps. There we go. One, two, three, four. And then I guess five. Aha, so I don't have to say four full jumps. I can say five save myself the embarrassment. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Mm, 
I don't think I found any full jumps on like the second screen. That's what we should work on next. Here? No. Hmm. I don't believe you, Bobandal. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's always another full jump. <laughs> or I can just, you know, jump twice and get good. You know, but if I have the opportunity to cheese it or get good, I'm gonna cheese it. <laughs> ah! Stop. Stop. <laughs> they could be here. It's always a possibility. Oh. <laughs> Cheaters never prosper. Or cheesers. <laughs> I'm good then. Okay, good. <laughs> I can cheese it all I want. Extra cheese. That's why I can't be a... That's also why I can't be a vegan. Because I'm cheesing it too much. On a daily basis. kind of hard. It has me at a loss, a loss for words. It's getting up on that particular, there we go. There we go. Getting up on that particular area is kind of hard. There we go. Perfect. All right. I do like these windows. I, I, you know, I haven't, I've never seen anything like this except, like, in Europe. When I was 16, I was able to go to, um, what was it? It was France and then a lot of Germany, uh, with my Oma. I'm, like, half German, uh, for my 16th birthday. It was amazing. And I think we, we might have been in Germany or something, but this window here, you know, uh, classic European churches have these kinds of windows, but it was the first time I've ever seen a window that was, like, you know so much taller than I was um, was in Germany and this is this is giving me those vibes it's, it's probably why I like the area so much I mean stained glass is always is always pretty I think oh haha -ha. full jump there works okay okay I see you game yeah half German and um yeah, I used to go to the Oktoberfest all the time when I was a kid, and I'd dress up in those cute little... I don't even know what kind of out, what outfits they're called. Um, lead... Wait, what's Lederkäsen? Is that... No, that's a food, right? I don't know any German. <laughs> but my whole... Um, one side of my family's all German. They all speak German. My dad speaks a little bit of German. I guess it skipped me. I decided to learn Spanish, and I can't even learn Spanish. <laughs> I just... I'm really bad at learning languages, unfortunately. Um, I'm sure if I, you know, was immersed fully in the language, I'd be able to learn it, but yeah. I, I wish that my high school had German as a language, or else I totally would have taken it, but, you know, it's not as common as, you know, sign language, Spanish, um, French. You know, those are like the three most common options that I see in high schools, at least in California. Yeah, yeah, so I must have seen one of those, um, but it, it reminds me a lot of this, obviously. Very, very pretty. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> mm. 
No, I don't want to get thrown back. Oh well. <laughs> I'm here, and then I just get, com I eat myself off the roof. Okay, we can do this. Mind over matter. Um. Have you ever done, this is kind of in the back of my head right now, so I'm just going to talk about it, but have you guys ever done, like, so many interviews in the span of, like, you know, a couple weeks that you forget that you interviewed for some places? That's what I'm having right now. <laughs> Out of the corner of my eye, I saw an email uh, from somebody. I didn't even know that I, I interviewed with them. I feel like I, I didn't, but they're like, we didn't accept you. In which case, I already have some other job prospects, so it's not that big of a deal. But I'm like, did I even apply for that? Or like when you apply to so many places and then you're like, you, you get these emails from people you don't know. And you're like, who who are you? And then you have to, you know, obviously read the email to kind of remind yourself. But even then, sometimes I get in like, I, I apply for so many jobs that I have no recollection at all for when I applied for it. I'm like, did... Did I do that? You know, um, one, of, one of those situations. So I just had one of those situations right now. In which case, it's not that much of a loss because, you know, if I wasn't thinking about it that much, I probably didn't want to work there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't, I didn't get the job because this place I didn't even know I applied for. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you forget about everything, even after the interview. I, I do the opposite. I stress over it. I think about all the questions and then come up with even better answers. I just agonize over, over you know, the interview. I, I think about it way too much after the fact. <laughs> way, way too much. Oh, there you go. That was a little shortcut right there. A little, little shortcut. Yeah, and I've, uh, I don't know. I've interviewed so many times now, especially this week. It's been so crazy um, that I've, like, come up with, like, little interview. Like, I I don't even prepare for the interview traditionally anymore. I just look up all the people that are going to be in the interview. And for the most part, they're all online. And then I figure out, <laughs> like, I, like, do, like, cyber, like, Facebook stalking or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's all public info, obviously, but, you know, going on the school district website and, um, you know, all of that. And then I just learn everything that they like and, you know, what they believe for and believe in and stuff. And then I, I kind of weave that into what I talk about during the interview. And it's been, it's been going really well. People are like, oh my gosh. Or like, I figure out they, you know, went to the same high school as me or something like really tiny like that. And that can make all the difference. So, you know, really being personable is, you know, crucial when you're interviewing, I think. Because they want somebody that they want to see every day. <laughs> or that they want to work with. Okay. Uh, think about this next jump. <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it before you tell me I didn't think hard enough. I thought about it. I thought about it. <laughs> I put it up. I put a lot of thought. No, I looked at it. I looked at it. <laughs> I'm usually one for just to jump, jump for it. So I took like five seconds there to kind of, uh, you know, figure out the situation. <laughs> I, I thought wrong. I don't know. It's like one of those things where I just have to do trial and error. Because I don't know if anything's going to come to me, really. But, uh, I did think about it. In which case, I'm like, I can do this. <laughs> and then I just did it. Um. No! Wait, did we figure out how to full jump here? I forgot if we did. We might have. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I'm not that sure. Oh! Oh, I remember now. Oh, it wasn't that. Hold on. 
It was like this. Haha. -ha. Okay. Back here again. Like what am I what am I thinking about really? Like I have to do like a medium kind of jump, right? I mean, maybe I could do a full jump. We can try a full jump and see if I get caught by the roof. Ha ha! Okay, I do get caught by the roof. That is good to know. Okay. And then we're back here. <laughs> My new least favorite area. <laughs> Am I just gonna start sliding if I do make that jump? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is terrifying. No, let me through. So holding down the walk button is gonna help me this time. I've been complaining like this whole game that me holding down the walk button doesn't help, but this, this is where it does help. What's up that little corner over there? It's like I'm supposed to jump there, but I don't know why I would do that. Ah! I didn't full jump. Oh no! I can break the ice? What? No, don't don't tell me. I want to I want to try to figure it out myself. That was a good first attempt, I think. Oh, as in stopping? I mean, I've just been- I was holding down the movement key, like, the way that I don't want to fall. You know, just- so if I jump to the left, I would hold the movement key to the right if it was like an open space. So wherever I'm throwing myself, I want to do the opposite so I can kind of offset the fact that I'm going to fall to my- to my doom. Hopefully I'm explaining that right. Yeah, like breaking. Oh, breaking! Oh, okay, I got confused. Yes, yes, yes. Now I get it. I thought you meant breaking as in, uh, smashing. English, English has a lot of words that sound similar. Um, hmm. Yeah, no problem, Bo Bandle, no problem. Um, but, uh... There we go. I imagine it's just you walk the opposite direction than when, where you jumped, and that's how you break. Oh, or maybe... Let me think. Hmm. I could try out a couple different things. I want to try to figure it out first. Why can't I make it back? <laughs> You can't crouch in this game or else I'd say crouching. Maybe you can do like a little mini jump once you land to stop sliding. Yeah. Breaking? <laughs> is, is Parappa the Rapper that one video game for like the PlayStation? Why, why am I imagining, you know... Like some sort of like animal rapping. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does that make any sense? Oh, I should have full jumped. Why didn't I full jump? <laughs> no. Parappa the rapper. Okay. So we are going to. There we go. Full jump. Not a full jump. Not a full jump. There we go. And then full jump. Alright. There's a better way. Hmm. You had to rap to get through things. <laughs> that sounds so familiar to me, Uso. It's not it's not the video game character though, huh? Hmm. Whoa! Oh. 
Huh. Maybe if I want to stop, I can just hold the jump button and then just jump up in the air. No. <laughs> it was a good try. I think it was a good thought. What's, what's going on over here? Oh, right. Ugh. This area is very pretty. Oh, okay. I'm definitely gonna have to look him up after the stream. So that doesn't work, right? So we need to get closer to the corner before we do that full jump. Alright, so we're gonna do this. Oh! Oh gosh, that one's a lot harder to stop on. Okay. Now this is where it gets important to be able to stop. Maybe I just have to do like another crazy jump while I'm sliding. Like be really quick about it. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> oh, I'm scared, help. <laughs> Impressive, right? <laughs> oh man, can I get past here? Ah, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta do like a shorter jump after you get off of that one. Yeah, I think I think that went fairly well. I mean, for like a third attempt, right? Someday I'll make this. There we go. Oh, on the oh, on the church's cross. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it connects on the other side, so I think I had to drop off. I gotta pray to the jump gods while I'm here. Oh gosh. Let me through. There we go. I'm gonna, sit a I'm gonna sit a little bit off center because I don't want the light to blind me. Okay. Ah! Why? Why did I do that? There must be an easier way to get past this little part. Landing on that is like so hard for me. Good idea. Good idea to take a break and drink some water. Okay. Woo! Oh yeah, I don't think that connects. Yeah, pray for me. <laughs> ah! Oh, man. Good thing I was holding down that button. To jump to the left. I mean, to walk to the left. So now I do have to hold down the walk button. Okay. Oh! Oh my gosh. Alright. We're here again. Ain't no thing, but chicken wing. There we go. Alright, uh, how do I get up there? Hmm, <laughs> not like that. Wow. Beautiful, just beautiful. Can I full jump and just get over there without dealing with this? 
Yes, I can. <laughs> I don't like dealing with things, so I full jump. <laughs> All these creepy frog faces. <laughs> All right. So I gotta. I have to make it up there so I can jump over there. Okay. I have to make this jump to my left. My hands are really sweaty. <laughs> it's probably not helpful. Let me. Oh! Ah! Okay, we're okay. I caught myself. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. We're still here. Barely. Why do I why can't I make that jump anymore? I think I'm just too scared to jump all the way now. There we go. Woo! Alright, we can try again. We can rebuild. I went too far last time, right? Yeah, that was my issue. I went over. Ah! Uh, again. Ah, uh, even holding that left stick, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. That's okay. We'll get back up there. Lickety split. If I can make this darn jump. <laughs> Let me add it. Oh. Hello, icy area. I'm I'm back with a vengeance. Ooh, sometimes I don't I don't jump in time. Can I crouch while I'm sliding? I don't know if I've ever checked that before. Mm, I'm assuming I can. I just need a surefire way to get past this part. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, I don't want to fall. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. That was kind of my own fault. <laughs> hmm, if I land there, I get just full jump to get back, which is nice to know. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that would do. <laughs> Unlock some new super jump or something. Nah. Nah, that'd be too easy. Oh, okay. Still, I don't understand the 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 how all of these chandeliers are, you know, kind of just hanging here, no rhyme or reason. They're, some are very close to the ground, some are very very high up. They don't care. <laughs> hey, Smitty Smob! Thank you so much for the host. I appreciate it. We're playing some more jump jump, in which case I am falling a lot. <laughs> How are you, Smitty? How was, uh, were you playing Dark Ascension again today? I, I think I caught a little bit of it. I, I was lurking, though, quite a bit. <laughs> Did you make any, any progress? I like watching when you play, um, I think you were playing in the arena a little bit, weren't you? Or, I've been watching a lot of Darkest Dungeon. A lot of 
Well, so a lot of people have been streaming it lately. I think it was you that were that was playing. Yeah, you did the pet, the pet mod, which was really cute, but it makes food harder, right? And then I think you were doing the PvP, right? I like watching the PvP because then, you know, I, I get a better idea of like the different characters and their strengths and stuff without necessarily getting, you know, kind of spoiled, I guess, um, for certain missions and whatnot. So I do like watching, you know, PvP. I mean, I don't know how much you can get spoiled for Darkest Dungeon. You kind of know what you're getting into, but um, I try to not get spoiled too, too much. So I have been watching a little bit of PvP, like here and there. Don't fall, don't die. Ah! <laughs> you're just gonna hear me randomly scream when I think I'm gonna, when I think I'm gonna lose it all. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, modded abilities? I didn't know about that. I knew about like the items were a little bit weird and stuff. Isn't your abilities and skills the same, but it's like max level? Or that's what I thought it was. Oh no, have I not been learning anything at all? <laughs> okay. Oh, why did I do that? No, no. Dang it. Dang it, man. Getting thrown off like crazy. <laughs> Hey, thanks for the for the follow. Is it I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that it's it's laugh. That's my first and final final guess. <laughs> Alright. Have you been uh Smitty, have you been doing like the whole schedule thing that's new on Twitch? I was talking about it a little bit earlier, about how pressured I feel to have like an official schedule now and how I was waiting two hours to start the stream because I said I was gonna start at two. <laughs> so I, st I like sat around for two hours. It's like, I don't think, I mean, unless I'm wrong, I don't think that, um, you know, that Twitch schedule thing that's on the profile now allows you to just say you're gonna be streaming on a certain day without saying a specific time. So I'm like, oh no, you know, someone's gonna think I'm starting exactly at this time. You stream at the same time? Oh, I see. It's, it is laugh. I said laugh, I didn't say boff. <laughs> boff. <laughs> Wait, is that a word? No, it's not. I don't think it is. But if you tell me it is, I'll, I'm probably gullible enough that I would think so. <laughs> Bo, ba. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry for butchering your name. Oh, we just met. This is not a good start. <laughs> oh god, oh god, I'm falling. I'm scared. Okay. Ba. Bo? Bo? I'm just gonna... <laughs> just a combat king. <laughs> Oh no, I'm not gonna remember that. Combat King. You play Mortal Kombat a lot? I hope you're like the best, the best Mortal Kombat player, because that's immediately what I think when you say Combat King with a K. I'm the fall, I'm the fall queen. If <laughs> you can't tell already. <laughs> By the amount of times I'm falling and jump king. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh! Let me go. There we go. Haha! <laughs> Spa! <laughs> if this is a weird way to make me ball like a sheep, consider consider it done. I've already I've said ba way way more than I usually do in a single day. The way I formatted that makes it sound like I'm always walking around like saying animal noises. I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay, this is the jump that I'm stuck on, ladies and gentlemen. This is as far as we've gotten. What is that? Like that name? Ben? <laughs> Bean? 
Hrithger. Bean Hrithger. That's how I'd pronounce it. <laughs> I've gotten very good at reading usernames before I say them out loud. I because there's there's some usernames that people have that are like very very questionable. In which case I just take, you know, like the the word that isn't questionable and I just use that. <laughs> And then people are like, did you even read the whole username? And I'm like, that's why I edited it before I said it out loud. Like, I edited it in my head <laughs> to make sure I wasn't going to say anything questionable. Because there's a lot of people out there who do that kind of thing. Ben Benedict. Ben E. I just call that Ben E. Wait, Ben E. Dict? <laughs> Have I been pronouncing Benedict wrong my whole life? Oh no, okay. <laughs> there are some clowns out there. For sure. Oh no! <laughs> oh man. This sucks. I hate this place. Oh, Benny. So you just say Benny. Okay, I see. I see. Benny is in Benedict. Mm -hmm. No, let me through. Let me up, let me up. Oh man, is this icy world, like, long? Oh, is this gonna be like the snowy world all over again? It is pretty, though. And I do like the the music. I think you, you guys can probably hear the at atmospheric music coming in and out a little bit, right? I do like that. Oh! Caught myself. Ah! No. <laughs> Ice physics. Yeah. I thought I thought wind physics was going to be the worst of it. Ice physics are kind of annoying, but yeah. We'll we'll master them. We'll master them with time. It just might take me like 5 more hours. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Very tranquil. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Oh. <laughs> How do I get up? I just fall all the way back down to the bottom. That's what I do. Just gotta start start fresh. Here we go. That reminds me. Uh, since I said the word fresh, now I'm thinking about, um, not falling. I'm always thinking about not falling, but, uh, does anybody, has anybody ever done, like, that, uh, grocery service where they send you, like, a preset, like, you know, or, like, different, uh, foods to make different recipes every week? Has anybody ever done that? I think it's called Think Fresh or something like that. But I, I used to see advertisements for it all the time. I haven't seen that many recently, though. But, uh, I guess it's, like, to get you to eat healthier. They send you, you know, fresh vegetables. Yeah, like Blue Apron. Has anybody ever done that before? I mean, it sounds like an interesting idea. I don't know how well, you know, vegetables and stuff would travel. I mean, I guess they must travel pretty well if you make a whole business off of sending them with recipes, right? But I've never known anybody who's done it. Yeah, because then you never have to leave. You never have to leave your uh, leave your house. And hey, Jay, you slid right into chat. <laughs> your uh, yeah, your your name is like the same purple as uh, as Kurt. So I got confused for a second. I'm like, how did Kurt write so much in so little time? <laughs> the colors like throw me off sometimes. <laughs> gonna be gonna be honest sometimes the colors are how I distinguish the chat from each other <laughs> color-coded is perfect oh, okay so you're saying your roommates have done it before right Jay they would try the free month oh and everyone would do the free trial yep that's how you do it you got to get that free trial <laughs> yeah that makes sense So, Jay, when you got the food, it was it was good, right? Like they were able to send everything. Like, did it come in like some sort of refrigerated, 
like package or something. You know, I, I don't know anything about any of this, so I sound I sound weird when I talk about it because I don't I can't I can't wrap my head around sending fresh fruit produce through the mail. Like my my brain pauses for a second and I'm like, not buying things from the store? What? Like cans make sense. Like I buy chocolate from Amazon all the time. <laughs> And the chocolate seems to survive the trip, but I'd, I imagine vegetables would have to be, you know, more, you know, packaged in a more uh, precise way to survive the trip. Oh, ice packs. Got it. Yeah. A lot of plastic. Oh. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that. Yeah. All Amazon knows that I buy is uh, chocolate. <laughs> I always buy my Lindor truffles from them once I run out of them. <laughs> I'm like, I can't be bothered to leave the house and I need I need my Lindor truffles, dang it. <laughs> They're so good, oh my gosh. I never thought I was gonna find something better than the cookies and cream Hershey's bar, but Lindor truffles did it, man. Also, I don't know how I lived so long without eating, you know, Lindor truffles or cookies and cream Hershey's bar. I used to, you know, just eat Hershey's bars by themselves and think that was it. That was it for me. But I was also six, so I was also a, a child. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know the wondrous world of chocolate. Yay! Thanks, Mel. I'll add some chocolate options to my Amazon wish list so you guys can send me chocolate. <laughs> Should I throw some vegetables in there too? Can you put vegetables on your Amazon wish list? <laughs> you guys could just send me like a tomato or something. <laughs> and I'll assume you're not sending me a tomato to like pretend to throw tomatoes at me or anything. Oh! Just send me like celery or something like that. And then I'll try to do something with it. Ritter Sport bars. Wait. Wait, is Ritter Sport. Two words are together. Oh, I think I'm still thinking about Toblerone. I don't know if I'd, I've ever heard of a Ritter Sport bar, Jay. Oh my gosh. Am I missing out on even more chocolate delights? Oh my gosh, why did I fall? Why did I? Why did I do that? Square chocolate things. Interesting. Very interesting. And you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm half German. Uh, and there's like this German place that's semi nearby. I, I always take my German family to this particular restaurant that serves German food and they have a store attached and they sell all these German things. I think, you know, uh, ex you know, they're exported from Germany to here and they have the best chocolate. You know, it's like authentic German chocolate. Um, I can't read any of the, any of the, you know, the, what's it called the packaging. So I couldn't tell you what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> but Germans know their chocolate, man. It's, it's good. It's very good. There are like these like chocolate covered, um, oh, I'm gonna fall all the way back down. There's these chocolate covered marshmallows that are the bomb. And they're like a German dessert. What's in a Mr. Good bar, Uso? I've always seen them, but I've never had one. I also get this. I, I, I also never had a Snickers until I was an adult. I was just, I think I found out there was, there's like peanuts in a Snickers, right? And I did not like the idea of like peanuts or almonds. Like I hate Almond Joy. So I think I connected Almond Joy with Snickers and I would just refuse to, to eat a Snickers bar. And I, I ate one, you know, when I was an adult and they're okay. I mean, I wasn't missing out on anything, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, it's just crazy, you know, what I didn't try as a child, because I was just, I was like, nope, it's going to taste just like Almond Joy. I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> oh my gosh! Jay, I know what you're talking about now. I, I've seen, like, the chocolates that have, like, biscuits in them. I, 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 I see it in my head. I don't, I, is that what they're called? I mean, I don't know the name, so you're probably right. Yeah, Ritter Sport. Mm-hmm. It's coming back to me now. That not that a German chocolate? I, I, I see that in, like, the German store a lot. 
uh, the restaurant I was talking about, they do sell Ritter Sports there. Oh, interesting. Oh my gosh. The German store sells French things as well? I had no idea. <laughs> I overestimated the Germanness of this place, I guess. Why did I do that? <laughs> Sometimes I just... I just throw myself uh, off ledges for the, the kicks and giggles. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for gifting us up to Jay Uso. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, they are good. Man, I'm craving some chocolate right now. Ooh. I gotta eat dinner semi soonish. Semi soonish, though. Yay! Yeah, Jay, Jay needs needs the hedgies. <laughs> Why did okay, okay? Stop walking. I mentioned this before, but sometimes I jump and I walk right off the platform I was jumping to. It's not fun. Okay. Why is this so hard for me all of a sudden? There we go. Alright, excellent. We made it. Okay. So, what are some other, since we're on the topic of chocolate bars, right? What are some other underrated chocolate bars in your opinion? Because I think, I love cookies and cream Hershey's. I think that's super underrated. I never hear anyone talking about it. But, like, if I were to get anything on Halloween as a 25-year-old, <laughs> stopping house to house, um, I would want the people to give me Hershey's cookies and cream bar. Also, I get bummed out when I think about the fact that I'm too old to go trick-or-treating anymore. And then, yeah. I'm, I'm very upset about it. I need to find, like, a bunch of friends that will let me come over and pretend to trick-or-treat at their house. Because I need to, I need to do that part of my childhood over again. <laughs> As an adult, I know, like, all the best spots now to get, you know, chocolate, chocolate bars and stuff like that. Like, I can plan out, like, you know, where I want to go. I can even drive to different neighborhoods now. Like, the whole trick-or-treating game is, like, stepped up a level now that I actually know, you know, now that I can actually travel further. Man. <laughs> Wish my brother was a little bit younger so I could just take him. <laughs> He's... He's uh, 17 now, my younger brother, and I'm like, oh, you want to go trick-or-treating? I asked him last year, and he's like, no, no. He doesn't miss it, but I'm sure when he turns 25, he's going to miss it, too. <laughs> That's the year for missing trick-or-treating. Oh, my gosh. Oh, why? Yeah, no more free candy. Now I have to buy candy for strangers. <laughs> It was a lot funner when I didn't have to buy the candy myself, you know? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you agree. You said that cookies and cream is underrated. Kit Kats. You guys were saying Kit Kats are good? Wait, was there somebody else who said something, something different? Or were you guys both saying Kit Kats? My chat doesn't let me scroll up and down. Oh, Jay, you were saying Kit Kats, too. Um, I don't know why. Like, I, I have to figure this out, but my computer, whenever I, like, so let's say I'm on a website and I have a click-down menu and it's like, oh, when were you born? And it shows, you know, the 12 months. It's a click-down menu. I have, like, three seconds to make my decision or it closes out on me. And I think the same things happen with my scroll bar. Because when I scroll up and down, I have three seconds to read the message before it automatically goes back down to the bottom. I don't know if that's a setting or if my computer's just cursed or, um, you know, if my computer's trying to help me out from being, you know, indecisive and, you know, at least for the multiple choice part. But, uh, my, my computer's really weird. <laughs> it's like, nope, you don't, you don't get to look at the options or the chat for more than three seconds. That's, that's as much, much time as I'm going to give you. Yeah, it's sentient. That's what's happening. That is the only logical conclusion. <laughs> and uh, let me think. I Have I ever purposely refrigerated chocolate? I don't think I have. 
I've only done it when I want to preserve it. You know, when I want to have it for a long time. But, you know, if you freeze your chocolate bars, you know, both is good, I think. I've just never done it, like, purposely. Like, to, like, eat it later. I always do it as, like, a side thing. And I'm like, oh, I have so much chocolate. I'm just going to put it in the fridge so then it can thaw out later. Um... But a frozen Kit Kat sounds pretty good. Don't they have, like, a lot of different uh, chocolate bars out there where it's, uh... I thought this worked. There we go. Isn't there chocolate bars out there where they're, like, ice cream bars now? So you can get, like, a Snickers ice cream and... Is there any other different kinds? Snickers ice cream is so good. I love Snickers ice cream way more than I like the candy bar. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I just keep breaking my teeth on the frozen candy bars. <laughs> so I'm too much of a chicken uh, to, to freeze them that much. Or to eat them frozen, I should say. So you gotta let thaw that perfect amount, I guess. Alright, jump! Oh, jump! Jump! Okay, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine, don't panic. You're fine. You're fine, Jump King. You're not... I'm not gonna let you die. Imagine if he died every time I failed to jump. My goodness. That'd be a little dark, huh? Twix! Yes, that's the other one I really like. Yeah, Twix? I've had a... Wait, Twix cookies and cream? I have not. I thought you were gonna say ice cream for a second. I read part of the message and then got excited. <laughs> I've had Twix and Snickers ice cream. I have not had a regular Twix cookies and cream bar, though. That sounds good. I think I've heard of it. I, I've, I have, have heard of it before. If I full jump, like, to the right, would that help? No. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I dropped down here. Good. Ooh, that sounds up my alley, especially since I, I already like cookies and cream. How does one person get up there? What... Look at that jump. Oh my gosh. I always over jump it. We'll just try again. Oh my gosh. No. No. <laughs> no matter what I do, I just keep keep sliding. <laughs> oh, have a good dinner, Kurt. Make something, make something delicious. Since, since I don't, I, I don't know what I'm gonna have, but you should make something delicious so I can vicariously live through you, even though I don't know what you're gonna eat. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be good. <laughs> that was a really weird way of putting it. Anyways, I'll, I'll see you later, Kurt. <laughs> that was the most awkward goodbye. <laughs> Just like no matter what you eat, I'm gonna I'm gonna know what you eat, Kurt. <laughs> oh, I think I think Jump King is melting my brain. You know, like how really dumb shows can like kind of melt your brain cells. I think that's what's happening with really hard platformers in my brain. They just it just starts melting. Um, okay, let's jump. Let me up. Let me up. <laughs> Please, no. Uh, so if the jump's too short, I fall. And if the jump's too long, I fall. So you gotta get really good at just jumping that minuscule amount that you need to jump. Oh my. <laughs> he just planked all the way down. <laughs> no, sorry, not planked. That's a little bit too much of a millennial thing for me to say. Um, he was like doing a belly flop all the way down. There we go. That's that's a better way of putting it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, he didn't even try to reorient himself. That was a man with nothing to lose, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just belly flopping to his doom. <laughs> Man, I always cringe a little bit when I see people do, like, a big belly fl flop, like, into a pool. Oh, man. I I feel pain for them. And they come out and their stomach's all red or something like that. I'm like, why, why would you do that to yourself? Why? I don't understand. 
In which case, I have a confession to make. I have never jumped off the high dive at a pool before. I just I just had to get that off my chest. I have to I have to let you guys know. I'm not the person you think I am. I'm not the daring person that you think I am. I'm the person that gets in line for the high dive and then chickens out as soon as I get to the ladder. <laughs> I'm not even that strong of a swimmer. So I think I think it's good that I'm avoiding the high dive. I think the moment that I decide to do the high dive is the moment I I, you know, I might be in a little bit of trouble. But, you know, that's like a classic, that's a classic, like, school movie trope, right? Where the school goes to, like, the pool and everything and the cool kids are jumping off the high dive, right? Th that's a thing that happens, right, in movies? And then, like, the wimpy kid's like, I can do the high dive, and then, you know, walks up to the ladder that goes up to the high dive and just can't do it. That's me. I relate to that kid. Oh. It's amazing I wanted to be... Oh! There we go, I fell. Um, it's amazing I wanted to be a dolphin trainer, but... You know. And then I realized... When I was a kid, I wanted to be a dolphin trainer because I watched this amazing mu movie on, like, dolphins. And I went to SeaWorld a lot as a child. So I was misguided in thinking I wanted to be a dolphin trainer for maybe six months. And then I realized I need to really enjoy swimming and know how to swim if I wanted to be a diver. I mean, sorry, a, a dolphin trainer. I had to like basically dive. And then, uh, you know, that nipped, that nipped that dream in the bud really quick. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm definitely not. I'm, I have to swim with the dolphin? Oh heck no, I just wanted to hang out with the dolphin as a job. So that, that was uh, the only other uh, job I ever entertained besides being a teacher was when I was like seven or eight years old and I wanted to be a dolphin trainer. Oh, oh man, I'm slipping and sliding. You could say that I'm tilting. I thought I thought I was gonna make a pun there, but it's, tilting doesn't really have anything to do with slipping and sliding, huh? I'm surprised how cold the water is still. That water's been in there since this morning. I got a, I got a hard work in water bottle is what I've got. I've heard strange things that, um, word around the block is that drinking cold wa water isn't always good for you, especially when you're exercising, I guess. You're supposed to drink room temperature water, which seems kind of weird to me. I feel like I'm, you know. I feel less hydrated if it's not, you know, cold water, but I remember I read somewhere, don't know if it was an actual scientist or, you know, a reputable source that said this, but I heard that drinking cold water after you exercise is sometimes not good. I don't know. I don't know. With claims like that, I could say, I could say a lot of things are sometimes not good for you. Like, you know, I can make the statement, you know, sometimes eating broccoli isn't good for you. As long as I don't give specifics, I could be right. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe that's why. Yeah, sometimes. But I can't be specific on what times. You could be like, sometimes, you know, s too much sunscreen is bad for you, for example. As long as you say the word sometimes, you can say almost anything. <laughs> I'm making that realization right now. I'm just realizing that now. And then if people are like, well, what times? Yeah, vague caution. Mm-hmm, exactly. That's a tool of a person who thinks that they know something, but they're not 100% sure on it. <laughs> You're like, oh, you know, sometimes, sometimes this happens. And you're like, well, that's true, but can you, can you give me some more detail about that? And they're like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm guilty of saying sometimes, uh, sometimes as well. It's just something that, uh, something that slips out sometimes. Ooh. 
Oh my gosh, why am I doing so poorly at this chandelier again? Gotta get my head in the game. I don't know if this is particularly hard. There we go. Alright, sounds good, Jay. Make something. I hope you make something good. I'm not gonna tell you to make something good. You know, you, you have total choice of what you w decide you want to make, but I hope whatever it is, it's good, it's good for you. How awkward can I, can I make saying bye to someone who's about to eat? <laughs> The answer is, I can make it very awkward. Oh, there we go. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you more detail, but I have no idea what I'm talking about. Precisely, yeah. Or you could just tell the person, like, you know, if you don't know what you're talking about, but you want them to think that you know what you're talking about, you could be like, oh, you know, I, I would explain it to you, but it, it would take a long time. <laughs> you could say something like that. So then somebody's like, you know, if they really think that you know what you're talking about, they'd be like, oh, so, you know, they're really smart, but, you know, they're trying to save me by telling me it's going to take a lot of time. So I trust them. You could say that, too. <laughs> what are you talking about, Bo Vandal? <laughs> That's so, so random. Just asking the chat. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were trying to make a comment about uh, the word the word sometimes. Or sometimes I say things. Oh, I'm using the word sometimes again. Sometimes I, I make a comment and then, you know, I then I read somebody replying to my comment in chat and I and I have no idea what they're talking about. So I was making sure it wasn't one of those times. <laughs> Ah! Ah! My face. <laughs> the keyboard on Samsung phones is abysmal. I have a Samsung phone. Why is it so weird for me to say Samsung? Samsung. 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 Samson? <laughs> Samson, are you there? Um. S Samsung? How come? Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure I said it right the first time. That's that's beside the point. Besides the fact that I can't speak the only language that I do speak, which is English. Um, I I have no problems with the keyboard on my. I have an S9 Edge, I think is what it's called. Um, I got it, you know, a year or two ago maybe. It's fairly new, but the the keyboard's okay on it. I've never owned an iPhone or anything. I've only owned, uh, like, Galaxy and Samsung phones. Um, Sam Samsung phones. Is Galaxy and Samsung the same thing? I'm getting myself all confused now. What I'm trying to say is I've never owned an Apple phone. In which case, all of my friends are like, please switch to Apple. Apple's so much better. And I'm like, nope, can't do it. I won't buy a MacBook. I don't want an Apple phone. Stay away from me with your your Apple stuff. Yeah, Android. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Mobando. You read my mind. Android. That, I've always had Android phone phones. Yeah, and everybody who's had, like, an iPhone, they, like, swear their life by it. And, I don't know, I think I'm missing, maybe I am missing out with the iPhone, but... I don't know. It's so weird for me to handle like an iPhone because I'm so used to to Android and those Androids have so many different buttons and then I look at an iPhone and I see one button in the center and I'm like, like how, how do you get by with just one button? I don't understand. That doesn't, it doesn't register. Have I seen past the ice yet? No, I haven't seen past that level yet. Bobandal. I feel like we're getting a little close, but yeah, not yet. We're stuck on the ice as of right now. But we've made it way past the part that I wanted to get to. At the beginning of this stream, and you can quote me, I, I said that I hope we at least get past the snowy area. So, bye. 
by that standard, I have, you know, uh, you know, achieved a lot. I've surpassed expectation. I didn't even know that this was here. <laughs> so I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of myself. You know, I don't know if I'm ever going to want to play another platformer again after I play this game. Or I might want to, you know, more likely I'll just take a long break from platforming. <laughs> Not that this is a no horrible experience. I don't want you guys to think I'm in, like, some sort of horrendous agony playing this game. But it's like, I don't know. With certain types of games, I think, you know... Small amounts is best. So I only play this game once a week because if I played this game more, I'd probably go crazier than I already am. So I think once I beat Jump King as, you know, when I take a break between playing Jump King and possibly playing uh, The Messenger, Getting Over It, or um, Wings of V, I haven't decided which one I'm going to play yet. Um, I was gifted all those games by Xavier. Um, I want to pick one of those three games to play after Jump King, but I might give myself a month break, uh, between the platformers. Because it is, it is very tough. It is very tough, and I do still kind of lean towards, uh, strategy games, or RPGs being kind of more my, more my jam. Though I do appreciate this. I feel like I'd be able to appreciate it more if I came at it with, like, fresh eyes after I was done playing this. Uh, playing this game and taking, like, a small break. Also, I can't play platformers all the time because then I'd get, I'd get too good at it, you know? And then that just wouldn't be fun to watch. It wouldn't be fair to you guys. <laughs> so that's my, that's my main reason. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too good. You gotta, gotta stay humble. <laughs> Alright. Let me check what time it is right now. It is getting pretty close to the time I eat dinner. So we'll play for another 10 minutes or so. I'm kind of already over my time, but I'm... I'm having a lot of fun chatting with you guys today. I guess I'm just in a, I'm in a chatty mood. Oh, we landed right on the place I wanted to land. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't want to stand there as much as I thought I did. All right, here we go. Let's go back up. But yeah, and uh, tomorrow we are going to keep playing Darkest Dungeon. I'm very excited to keep playing that for you guys, even though I'm, I'm a complete noob, so sometimes, uh, you know, I, I try to play spoiler-free, so I know it's hard for some people to watch me play Darkest Dungeon, because they're like, oh my gosh, I can help Sierra, but I, I, I kind of want it to be an experience where I figure out things the hard way and stuff like that, um, but I've been having a lot of fun streaming Darkest Dungeon. Um, so I'll be doing that tomorrow. <laughs> you played, you played Jump King a couple days ago? Did you just buy it on the Switch or, I think you mentioned you were gonna play it, right? Uso, you were saying something like that? Oh my gosh, yeah, the only thing that keeps me sane is to talk while I play. I don't know if this, this would definitely not be the kind of game that I, that I can play by myself, honestly. Um... Woo! Because I would not have the dedication to keep playing. I would just be like, nope. <laughs> but on stream, it's a little bit different. Okay, this is the jump, ladies and gentlemen. How is it on the Switch? Is the controls, like, decent? Do you play it on uh, handheld? Do you play Jump King on handheld mode? Or do you play it on TV mode? That's what I would be uh, curious about. Okay. Oh, oh, no. I hate, I hate everything. I think that jump's just impossible. This is the end of the game. <laughs> I'm sure if I played this game on Switch, it would be like playing a... Maybe playing a whole different game. Because obviously, the buttons are different than on uh, an Xbox controller. 
so I may- I would probably have to learn the game all over again. Because I'm so used to doing it, you know, this way, with the controller I'm currently using. <gasps> Maybe there is another way. <laughs> what, to make that jump I keep missing? Maybe. I don't know if I'm gonna figure it out today, though. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me move my big old face out of the way. I see in the corner, you see that right corner? There's like a little ledge that I might be able to get to. Huh. Yeah, there's a little ledge over there. I'm gonna try to jump to it on the right side. Give you guys a couple more seconds to look at it. Okay. I'm gonna try to get over there. Oh my gosh. Can I jump there? No. It just... I just fell. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Like, what would I even do if I got there? That falls the worst. When you fall and then you slide and then you just... <laughs> That's my dead body just rolling around in the wind. Oh gosh. This is what I imagine happens to Jump King if you stop playing. <laughs> He's just face face down, just, you know, laying there until you like come back and take control again. <laughs> I don't believe you, Bo Bandle. I don't think there's another way. You're trying to you're trying to prank me. I'm getting punked over here. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't. I think I just need to do like the, sm I don't know, like the most precise jump, the most specific jump in history. that slide a couple of times. I could get better at that. Ah, that wasn't enough! <laughs> they landed on that too. Okay. That is quite a hard jump to, to manage as well. Wow, that was the first time I fell without landing on anything in between. <laughs> That's impressive in its own right, I think. Just finding out how far you can fall in this game without hitting any obstacles whatsoever. Like how many screens you can fall. I'd actually be interested to see what the, you know, the worst fall in this game put could possibly be. Maybe I can just figure out once I'm done with this game and just drop down to the bottom and see what the worst fall is. Uh, I don't know. I think my worst fall ever must have been like five screens, right? Some Something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's that awkward moment when you're falling for more than five seconds. <laughs> Oh man. Hold on, that was bad. That was bad. I mean, at least there's not like any real consequence if you fall here. That's that's the good news. The bad news is I might start getting tired of this place sooner rather than later. <laughs> Man, imagine this area with ice and snow. I mean, yeah. Or no, sorry, with ice and wind, I meant to say. 
That would be crazy. <laughs> then you couldn't stop yourself from like slipping and sliding all over the place. That'd be the worst. Okay. I get so close, too. Like, it looks like he wants to stand at the edge, but he just goes overboard. He's juking me. I'm getting juked. Oh. I think that means tricked, right? That's what the, the cool kids say. Juked. Actually, I think that's a slang term from my generation, and I never understood what it meant. Juke. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking of the word duped, but I think it's the word juked. Oh, oh, please don't slide down. That man who sold me these sweet shoes told me I'd have more traction with these shoes. I call shenanigans. I don't... I think he was lying. <laughs> these shoes don't give me any traction at all! Oh, I landed. I landed on the chandelier. Okay, could be worse. I could have not landed on the chandelier. Alright, one more college try. What is a college try? Oh, it's kind of like, it's kind of just another way I think of saying giving it your best effort. Um, so I, I think that's what it means. College try. I think, I think it does mean just giving it your best effort. Or it could mean the opposite. Let me think. Let me look it up. A sincere effort or attempt at performing a difficult or seemingly impossible task. This whole game's about college tries, if that's the definition. <laughs> oh, the second map? You mean, like, the DLC bow bandle? Uh, you know, I could try that. Like, once I take a little bit of a break from Jump King. We could- I don't own the DLC, but- Oh, wait, the DLC just comes with this game, huh? I think- I think I already own the DLC, because I accidentally went to that area, and then somebody had to tell me that was the DLC. Camel told me to, like, not go any further because that was not the area I was supposed to go to. So, yeah, maybe. I could, I could think about it. Whoop. Oh, no. I know. I could beat it before Camel. I was definitely thinking that in my head. <laughs> I could be cooler than Camel. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to do something crazy. Okay, I want to make it, hold on, I want to, okay, let's hear me out. I want to make it to that platform that, to the right of me, the the little one that I, that I landed on once when I was trying to get to the right side of the screen, and I want to full jump from there, maybe? Maybe this is really easy to get up there, and I just need a full jump from an area, like this. So, uh, okay, maybe I won't <sighs> full jump, let me think. I think it'll be too much. Let's do like a medium jump. Oh no! Oh, help, I'm falling everywhere. Didn't I say I was gonna stop? Oh my gosh, I keep getting sucked back into this game. I just want the glory. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I'll get right on the chandelier. Just, 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 uh... Hold on, how do I get out of here? There we go. We'll just start here next time. This is a new area, so we've made some progress. And I'm gonna stop the stream there. Thank you guys so much so much for watching. Uh, watching me fall a lot, but we, we made it past the snowy and windy area. So that's the most important thing to, uh, to uh, consider when you think to yourself, oh, did Sierra make any progress? The answer is yes. Yes, Sierra always makes progress. <laughs> <laughs>
thank you guys. Thank you so, so much for the bits. I appreciate it. 